who's on, who's duty is that? Yeah, who's on, who's on cigar duty right now? The chick, Tash. She's supposed to be getting them. Is that your girl or assistant? <laughs> or? It's a chick. One of my chicks, you yeah. know. One of my, so one you, of my wives. I've got four wives. I'm from Ethiopia. Do you That's one of your wives? For real? Or is that a girlfriend? Girlfriend. Yeah, girlfriend. I haven't seen her in a minute. It's so wait, when you, when yeah. you bring a girl, <laughs> when you bring like a girl, is she a girlfriend or just a girl for the trip? Girlfriend. Girlfriend. Yeah. So you like make her, you put her on cigar duty? Well, if I, if I need a cigar, then I would ask her to go politely get me a cigar. Yeah. What if she said no? How could she possibly say no to me? <laughs> what if she's like, why, why do I have to get your cigars? Like get your own cigars. Why do I have to put you on a private jet to fucking Croatia? Fuck off then. There you go. There you go. I agree with that. <laughs> like, wait, wait, wait. So how many, Bye. How, many, how many girlfriends? Me? Yeah. Man, I'm a man of God. I'm a good man. I don't want to be in this podcast. Everyone trying to tell the world that I'm some kind of horrible, evil misogynist. Everyone seems to think I am for some reason. I, I think it's great to have multiple. But do you? Yeah, why not? I mean, if they're okay with it. Yeah. Well, uh, do you have like a ranking system? Like you have a main piece and then side girls? How does that work? I'm a man of God. I read the Bible. I go to church. I don't know. I can't possibly answer these questions. This is obviously going to be watched by every single female that has any kind of association to me. And I'm loyal to all of them. Oh, that's awesome. There you go. So do, do, do the math on that one. See, baby, I told you I was loyal. Don't worry about it. So I'm would loyal you, to all of you at the same time. You think it's possible for a man to, to be loyal to one girl? I think it's possible for men to do lots of things. Sure. We can go to the moon. You can be loyal to one girl. You can go scuba diving if you want to. I don't think that if men were truly honest with themselves that they want to be. I think men are loyal to a woman to try and inspire loyalty out of her. A man will sit there and go, I only want to be with her. But really what they're saying is, I only want her to be with me, which is a masculine imperative and it's natural and I completely understand that every man's the same. But if you could make a woman be loyal to you while not being loyal to her, then you would not be loyal to her. If a man's truly honest and says, if I can press this button and she's loyal to me no matter what I do, am I still gonna only be with her? Now you might prefer her, you might spend 99% of your time with her, et cetera, completely get that. But on a long enough time frame for the rest of your human life, if she's gonna be loyal to you regardless, are you telling me that with a, without any kind of backlash from her, without the chance of her cheating, without any bullshit, you're gonna tell me for the next 50 years you're not gonna fuck anything ever once? If she let you, why not? Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like everyone would it. agree to that. But everyone would agree to it, right? So it's different for men and women. Is what it's completely different for men yeah. and women, and it's also different, because a lot of people misunderstand what I say, it's different for men of a certain status, right? If, you, if you're a man who has his shit together, at a certain level of status, you can say to a woman, look, I love you with all my heart, I wanna be with you, I'm gonna take care of you, but you're not gonna tell me what to do. I'm in charge, because this is my life, you're on the Tate train, and we're, we're headed to, success station, I'm the one driving it. And if you're gonna be on my train, certain things are gonna happen. If you're unhappy, you can get off, no problem. I but feel like gonna... you've been experiencing that as like a high value male. Me and Salim kind of just started. I'm hoping Steiny gets there one day, but once you get there, it'll be, <laughs> Funny, yes. yeah. it'll be dope. When you get into the high value area, it's like, it's pretty fire. Well, if you're hard to replace, then you're gonna accept more things than you would accept from someone who's easy to replace, right? This is basic yeah. human psychology. We can take it away from dating and apply it to basically anything. You will accept your Lamborghini breaking down because it's hard to replace it. You will not accept your Toyota breaking down because you can just go get a Nissan. So it's the same kind of game, right? If you look at a guy and go, he is amazing at everything. I truly feel, I'm, I feel happy with this man. I can't find another man on his level who could possibly replace him or fill the hole in my life he would leave. Sometimes he fucks that bitch. Oh, fine. You're more likely to accept it. That's human nature, right? It's not even about intersexual dynamics and all the things I talk about, even though I could use those examples to apply all of my beautiful, completely correct, logical, you know, affirmations. The reason I don't do that is because everyone comes back and says misogynist, misogynist, misogynist. So fine, cool. Stop them all crying. Let's talk about human nature. People are not going to be quick to replace something or attempt to replace something, which is basically irreplaceable. So if you're a high enough status individual, then you get to get away with more. That's basic human psychology, isn't it, as a whole? And I think that uh, I'm with guys here. I'm not, I don't have to be polite. I don't have to say I think. I could say I know. I yeah, know. I don't think there's any girls in the room. Is there? Is, is there? Is Alyssa oh. even in here? You're oh. good. Bro. Oh, oh, act shit. like there's not. Cool. I know that women as a whole are quite understanding of their status. Women are very, very intelligent. I know people say I'm misogynistic and people say I say bad things about women. Women are very, very intelligent in certain key areas. And one of the things they are most intelligent at or best at is, is reading their own status and understanding what they can and can't get away with. Women are experts at that. 100%. Like you, you get the same chick who will act X way with one guy and get with a new guy and act completely differently. Because 
Do you think that's subconsciously though? Like with I think it's subconscious, but I also think they spend a lot of time on Instagram, a lot of time looking at their com competition, a lot of time looking in the mirror, a lot of time trying to look good. A lot of time, they spend a lot of time on themselves and within themselves, and they're pretty good at understanding their value and what they can get away with when it's compared against the value that's sitting opposite them, right? So they'll sit opposite one guy and be a dickhead and sit opposite the next guy and be a sweetheart. They're quite smart at that, right? That's so facts. I, it's true. So I think that most women actually, they get with a guy who they really know has his shit together. They're not gonna sit there with that guy and say, listen, you better not, da, da, da. Cause I'm like, if I talk to him that way, he's definitely gonna do it. Yeah. So they're gonna come at a different angle. It would really hurt me if you, and then once they say it would really hurt me if you, then you can, then you can apply counters to that in different ways. You can just simply ask, why would that hurt you? Well, if you're fucking all these bitches, how do I know I'm special? So the only reason you know you're special is because I'm sexually exclusive. So if you knew you were special with something else, perhaps you did something else with me or I did something else with you that I don't do with anybody else and you would know you were special. So what are you worried about me fucking that bitch for? And it, it can't be that logical because females are not that logical. You can't explain it that way. But I'm saying if you're with a woman long enough and you have frame and you have influence over her and you understand these basic paradigms and you, you mention them in the correct conversations at the correct way in the correct frame, over time, they'll learn to accept it. I say this and people completely have a meltdown. I don't know why people have a meltdown. It's fucking, it's facts. It's facts. You think any of these dudes fucking, you think any of these rappers fucking all these girls, the girls are telling them, you better be loyal. You better be loyal. <laughs> no, but why? Fuck no. Because they, because of his status. Because they don't want to be left. Because they know he'll just say no. Bye. So yeah. they just don't, they're like, okay, look at me in the mirror. Can I be replaced? Yes. Can he be replaced? Not easily. Fuck, I got to take this deal. That's the game. That's like, it's, and that's human psychology. You can apply that to anything. You can apply it to the fight game. There's an A side, B side. Human, inter human relationships, there's an A side, B side. Business yeah. deals, there's an A side, B side. Someone's got to fucking take the B side. So the way you're Someone's saying Someone's got to lose. Yeah. yeah. To a degree. Yeah, I mean, and to a degree. And to yeah. a degree. And, and, but this is the thing about relationships, because we can talk about relationships as a whole. Everyone says what I say is crazy. All I say is that love is real. Men and women should be in love. A man can be completely in love with a woman and care about her and still sometimes fuck something else. Like the higher your status, the more you can get away with because that girl's so afraid to lose that. So you can do whatever you want. Bro, it's the same, but it's the same with anything. Yeah. Is it, like buy a McLaren. It's not, it's not going to work for half the year. They're fucking nightmares, but they're McLarens. So I, it's just a game. <laughs> like I used to talk to Salim and he'd have random girls and he'd be like, yo, I, I'm, I'm crazy over this chick. And I would say, Salim, dude, think about who you are. You can get any girl you want these are just random chicks right well, now it's multiple now it's great so there's levels to it and i think that i think that chicks don't realize that until they don't have it and then they chase back right well women are also addicted to drama this is something else you have to understand about females that's very true <laughs> females are that's addicted to drama they are entertained no, by drama <laughs> what, what does a woman do in her spare time she watches the kardashians drama listen a, 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 I, I, I don't want to insult anyone i was about to say a bitch yeah i'm gonna stick with that a bitch will sit there, <laughs> a bitch will sit there and think, I need to relax. Let me watch a, a murder documentary about a serial killer who chops <laughs> people's heads off so I can have a nice good night's sleep in bed. They're addicted to this shit. They love drama. <laughs> so to some degree, even as a man, this is actually an important frame for men to understand. To some degree as a man, you have to instill drama in the relationship because if you don't, She's going to get bored. No, that's very true, man. And she's either going to leave or she will instill the drama, which gives her control. You don't want her to bring the drama. So you think girls, girls like to fight? Oh, they like drama. They oh, like yeah. to be entertained. Yep. So if she instills the drama, it's probably going to involve some other fucking dude. You don't want that shit, right? So you have to instill drama. So this is the question I always say to all the people who say I'm misogynistic and my view on relationships are wrong, et cetera, et cetera. I say, look, I have beautiful women who are in love with me and we're all happy and smiling every day. I get to fuck whatever I want. I have a very positive relationship with females. My life's good. You disagree with everything I say, but your relationship, you and your woman don't even fuck. So like, if you take the other paradigm, 99% of men disagree with me, but they go, they marry one chick, they be the good guy, get married, sit with her, just her, I'm loyal, blah, blah. They're all getting fucking divorced and the chick's giving them a hard time. Yep. You never see that dude who did the right thing and then go, I can do whatever the fuck I want because I do the right thing. So you know what? Leave her at home, I'm hitting the club, I can do what I want because I don't cheat. Never, it's like, oh, she's gonna get mad. Da, da. And he's the good guy. I'm the bad guy, and I get to say, see you next week. So what is, the, what is the cheating code in Andrew Tate's like, books? Like, how do you morally cheat if you have a girl? You're honest with her, you're upfront with her? It's not even about that, because when I say it on these podcasts, I have to condense everything. I have to be very compendious, and I have to try and... Or how does one, not Andrew Tate, how yeah. does one morally it's cheat? It's just about understanding and instilling a mental frame inside of the female that makes her understand that it's really not that big a deal. That 
coupled with your status and the fact that you're hard to replace will make you be able to get away with it. And when I say get away with, I don't even mean get away with. It can be a very honest and open thing. I'm telling you, man, like you'd be, most men would be surprised by how deviant women are. If you have a woman and you're truly cool and you're truly together and she truly loves you, you come home. Have you been out there? You fucked that bitch. I did fuck that bitch. You know what? I fucked her, but her tits are not as good as yours. Come here. <laughs> well, but does you that fuck work? Her, she'll love it. She doesn't give a shit. What if she had a better rack though? Well, then she's in trouble, oh, wait. right? But, but I'm saying if the framing is right, but it's about the mental framing. I say these things and men think I'm full of shit, but you have to understand the mental framing. I'll give you an example. If a man so that's your line when you come home and you just dog, no, but just compliment the girl's it's, rack it's and an then you're good? It's an example. That's a good, no, that's, that's, that's a good yeah, line. Though. But, I'm, but I'm talking about the mental framing. If a woman gets with a man and his frame is correct, that woman over a long enough period of time has the same political views, likes the same music, likes the same movies, has the same friends as him, watches the same things on YouTube, the same Netflix shows. Da -da. If you see a woman who loves that man, doesn't she do everything the man does? So if that man truly believes and can explain to her in a sensible way, look, I love you, I take care of you, I pay your fucking rent, you're living with me, that bitch, fuck that bitch, who cares? I fucked her, so what? Who gives a shit? She ain't here, she ain't living in the fucking penthouse, shut up. Eventually she's gonna be like, okay, well as long as those girls don't live with you, <laughs> Wait, they absorb their man's frame. Wait, but That's the frame. Hold on though, so what if, what if your girl comes home, same scenario, and goes, uh, yo, your, your dick is bigger, that's not gonna make you happy though. Bro. Okay, so this, this argument is one I've heard so many trillion times. They say, well, if you can do that, why can't the woman do that? And I can answer it in so many different ways. Give your harshest way. I, 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 yeah. I can give, my harshest way is that it goes against the will of God and nature. It goes against the way of man. For the longest period of human history, men had more than one woman. Every king, every sultan, read the Bible, read the Quran. In most of the world today, men still have more than one woman. Never in history, in any book ever, in any civilization since the dawn of human time have promiscuous women been celebrated, ever. They have been frowned upon in every single society ever. The main reason is because of paternity. Because what happens is if I have five girlfriends and they all get pregnant, we know who the oh, five mothers the are. Oh, the are in town? Thank you. And we know who the five fathers are. Yeah, thanks. Well, the father, the father sure. for the five kids. So you know who the kids belong to. Yeah. If you have a woman who's sleeping with five dudes, once she gets pregnant, nobody knows who the fucking kid belongs to. That's now the good. DNA test might be able to fix that modern science, right? But there's a whole bunch of modern science has to work the devil. That shit's new. Humans evolutionarily grew up until the 1950s, 1960s, where none of that shit was doable. You had to know who the mother and the father was. You had to have a virgin. That's, what the, that's why they celebrate virginity in most of these places on the planet. They can't do a four DNA test. If she ain't a virgin, I don't know as a fact I'm the, I'm the father. So I ain't gonna fucking deal with her shit. That's why virginity is so important in most yeah. of the world to this day. So to come along and say a woman can do it too is disgusting in the eyes of God and in the eyes of nature. You can come along with science and somehow then try and fix it and prove it. So, da -da, you, so God, it up. God just wants the boys to just run God through wants, chicks. God wants the warriors like out God's here. God's looking down right now and he's like, boys, I just want you to run through chicks. God, is, uh, God wants us, to, God wants the, the men, the masculine males of earth to reproduce, create his warriors. God needs warriors. What parable is that in? It's Tate, Tate, Tate 15. <laughs> okay. I'll search it up. Look it up. Wait, right. so when God needs warriors. New Testament? New and old. I'm everywhere, bro. Okay. I'm around. I'm around. You should read the book, G. I'm in there somewhere. You'll see it. And you go, that sounds like Tate. He probably wrote that one. <laughs> Luke. Nah, that wasn't Luke. That was Tate, that one. How about, but what about, what about, have you ever dated a girl that makes more money than you? That's impossible. <laughs> it's possible. That's what impossible. do you mean? What if, what if you, what if like, you what if you, a... when you finally go to the US, you're in LA and Kylie Jenner pulls up on you and she's like. She's still not richer than me. She's richer than you. Nah. She is. I'm ri but I'm rich in ways beyond money. You're thinking in numbers. No, I'm talking financially. Then I guess I'm gonna I'm gonna have a very good life, aren't I? Would you ever date a girl that's richer than I, you? Fuck yes. Why not? I, I so then, my, would you let her pay bills? I spent most of my life dating dating girls who were richer than me. Like for a long time, I had no money, and I date a bitch and she might have more money than me. I that was no problem for me because I was still in control. I was still in charge. Masculine frame is masculine frame is not all about money. The idea that it's all money is not true <laughs> at all. Right? I did very very well in my life when I had no money, and I was a, I was a professional fighter and I was on the way up and I was fighting and I didn't really have that much money. I did fine. So what if you're, a, but bro, what if you're, there are, there are dudes in New York right now selling CDs on the street with like four girlfriends and they're just tearing through pussy. Everyone knows it. Even they're the fucking CD everyone's wife on the slide. They're doing fine. So it ain't just about But then money. what leverage do you have over them if you're not taking care of them? Like what if Kylie Jenner's like, what the fuck? Like you're on my jet. It's bigger than yours. Like you can't fucking cheat on girls now. If I'm, if I'm, if I'm, or on would that, you just dip at that point? If I'm on that jet, it's my jet. 
Oh it's your God. jet? Oh my God. If I'm on her jet, then it becomes my jet. What if it says Kylie's skin on the outside Doesn't of the jet, matter, though? Doesn't matter, because if she's my chick... Do you make her pull off the decal? It, no, no, she can keep it. But if she's my chick, then, you know, she's mine, so her things are now mine. It's my jet. My house. This is my jet. Young lady, sit down. Be quiet. It's going to be fine. Don't worry about it. I fucked Hannah Montana, whoever. It's going to be okay. Like, so there might be some celeb beef there. But it's not just about money. I want people to understand it's not just about money. Because I have money is not the reason I say these things. Frame in and of itself is not just about cash. But do you think you could pull that off with a boss bitch is what well, I'm saying? Well, then, well, this is interesting, right? So now we can apply this to the things I've That'd been be saying. That'd be a true test. Now we can apply this to the things I've been saying. Someone like Kylie Jenner is far more difficult to replace because right. she's more scarce. Right. So then again, then she would be able to turn around and, and try and play the same, same game back with me. I'm not saying that it's all a game and it's all just like a chess match and those kind of things. I'm saying these are the basics of human dynamics and human nature. And that someone like Kylie Jenner can have anyone on the planet and there's only one of her. I, I want to actually say something quickly before we go into this. I am, I'm new, new to being big on the internet. I really don't know what Kylie Jenner looks like. Wait, is Kylie Jenner that's a dude? Cap. Is yeah, that that's a dude? That's Cap. Is Kylie Jenner the that's dude? That's huge Cap. Is oh. Kylie Jenner a guy? Wow. You have to be Cap. That's, that's a huge Cap. Who's the guy? You just Caitlin. brought up keeping up with the Kardashians. Yeah, but who's the dude one? Caitlin. Caitlin. Oh, okay, fuck that goal. I thought you were setting me up. That's the hottest I thought one. you were setting me up saying I'm talking about a dude. All right, okay, okay. Kylie Jenner. Kylie Kylie's Jenner's like sl slightly less hot than Caitlin. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, uh, yeah, obviously it would be a slightly different dynamic, but I'm not saying that, but who, who is she dating now? I Travis Scott. Okay, is he loyal? I don't know. I think he dogs. Probably not. Pro he probably dogs. What do you think? Do you know who Travis Scott is? I don't know, any, I don't know these people. So I don't know these people, but what I'm saying is that at a certain level of masculine frame, I think most women are, are kind of like, don't tell me about it. I don't want to know about it. Just do your thing. Please love me. I love you back. Boom. And most women will agree with this. I say this to girls all the time because I say these things and girls say, my man would never cheat. My man doesn't cheat. Blah, blah, blah. I say, go into there, into his room and demand to see his phone. And no matter what excuse he gives you, don't buy it. Demand to see it. Why do you want that though? Why but, would you do your boys like that? No, because exactly. Why would you do your boys like that? Because what's on the phone? Huh? What's on his phone? Probably some shit that some, she some, doesn't want to see. Bi some bitch. Yeah. So every man's doing it anyway. So every woman knows it. And she, the reason she doesn't demand to see his phone because she'll want to have her illusions shattered. Do you, think, do you think that that's fair for her to want to see the phone and get to see it? Fuck no. I tell the fuck off. But I'm just saying that women know truthfully because if they truly want to find out, they could. And they don't want to find out. They want to just pretend. Can, right? we, can, we, can, can I ask you something about the, um, the body count thing? About having chicks have their body counts on their foreheads? No, you have to explain it first. Explain it for the... For, well, be a professional, I, young I man. I will, sorry. Be a professional. We're on a, one of the biggest podcasts in the world. So please explain he's to new the, the podcast. He's new to the pod, too. But oh, no, I'm yeah, not. So. Me. Explain to the podcast You're still what on I trial said. A bit. Wow, yeah. Probably with this guy. Yeah. Um, you said you had to have... Girls had to have lines for each body that they've had <laughs> on not, their forehead. That's not even what I said. No, you said it would... If girls would have the number of body count or whatever they have on their head, it'd make everything way easier. Like, how so? But how, how would it be displayed? I, I didn't know exactly what you said after that, but I, I know. I'm here on this podcast, you guys. You don't even understand what I said. I'm, 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 I'm upset. Because we want, we want the audience to know, so we need you to dive into it. I said that a lot of the world's problems could be fixed if women walked around with their body yeah. caps on their foreheads. Yeah. I didn't say lines. So, sorry. And what would fine. be fixed? Like world hunger? Everything would be fixed, bro. I'm but talking why? about society at, at large could benefit from that scenario. What, is that? So? what does that fix? Because you have to extrapolate it. You have to extrapolate it and look at it the meta point. If women can't just sleep with anybody and everybody because they're gonna be known for it and shamed for it, they're gonna be very, very selective with who they sleep with. If they're very, very selective, then men are gonna have to be very, very, they're gonna have to be very, very hardworking and very, very dedicated to becoming that a man worth very... sleeping with. So now men are gonna be more honorable. Men are gonna try harder. Men are gonna be more interested in making sure that they're a person who's upstanding in society. Women are gonna be very selective who they choose. They're more likely to stick with a guy through thick and thin they don't want to add a new number to their head. Families will return. Families are an extension. Families are an extension of society as a whole, right? It's family, then it's town, then it's city, then That's it's state. Makes, then it's, then it, that makes somewhat sense. No, then I it's disagree. the country. They should make a Black Mirror episode about that. But they I, should. They should try it. I if, disagree. If, of course you disagree. But tell I'll me, tell you why. Tell me why. Because it's different. Like if you're looking for a one night stand and one chick has three bodies and one chick has 50, the chick with 50 is going to give you a way freakier night than the chick with three. So I'd maybe go with the girl with 50. You're going to walk around looking for chicks thinking, I want one that smells like For a one-night stand, though. I want one who's been plowed. Who's going want... to give, you, who's gonna give you a freakier yeah, night? I yeah, want I, don't, I, wouldn't I wouldn't want that, I don't think anyone For a one-night stand. Yeah, okay, two bodies? Two who, bodies? Are, yeah, who, fuck it. You can give me a virgin for a one-night stand. Who the hell yes, for the girl with the higher body Bro, count? fresh puss. Yeah, okay, that's a, but that's a weird yeah, but then there's a lot right more. There's a lot more, like, bullshit behind the scenes that you guys probably aren't Has anyone ever heard that? I would never... You don't understand the logic. If a girl had 100 bodies or 200... Okay, so if she has one... If she has one and then another chick has 10, 
Who would you rather smash? One. 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 All day. Okay, What's well, wrong with you? You guys bro? just don't get freaky, I guess, obviously. It's well, I mean, I, it's not about... I don't, I don't think freaky. About I, I mean, if you want chicks who smell a dick, that's your thing. But that ain't my thing. And I don't think it's most men's thing. Men that are, was a wild it, take. Men are, men are interested in... <laughs> men, are inter men are interested in innocence. It's yeah. innocence that men find appealing. This 100%. is what most people understand. Yeah. Women don't even know what men find attractive. What actually amazes me is that women go through the world and they're so concerned with how they look, but they have no understanding on a basic level of what men find attractive in women. And I know that for a fact, because every single time I sit with a chick and talk to her, especially for the first time or on a date or something, she's saying always completely the wrong thing. She's saying exactly which makes me le less attracted to her. The fact she's still hot will get her through it. What's the worst thing a woman can say on a first date? The worst thing is it's just basically things they don't think about, right? Like what's the worst thing they could say on the oh, first date? I mean, there's a bunch of dumb shit they could say, but within a realistic, within a realistic frame, I, I, I don't know. I, but it's all bad. I'll tell you why. It's all bad. Women will sit there and do something they think is innocent. They'll talk about traveling. I've been to here and I've been to there and I, I loved when I saw this, my favorite place is this. Da, da. When you sit with a dude on a first date and tell him how many places you've been, all he's thinking is been you've, been, you've been fucked. Yeah. You've been yeah, fucked yeah. by who, who paid for yeah. that? Yeah, who, who paid, paid for that? For that? Yeah, yeah. Oh, nice hotel, <laughs> bitch. Like it's, it's bullshit. Like shut the fuck up. And on top of it, men want, men want innocence. And the reason we find innocence attractive is because we want to be the female's portal to the world. Yeah. If I meet a woman. You want to hear they've never been anyway. Uh, never. <laughs> I will show you the world. 100%. The first private jet you get on will be mine. You've ever been in a Lambo? No? You're getting my one first. I'm yes. going to show you brand new experiences. If I sit there with some bitch and she's like, I've been there, I've been that. I went to this party. My friend has a jet. I was in this Lambo. Da, 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 da. And you're just like, shut the fuck up. There's nothing less attractive because we want to be their portal to the world. Mm. The reason women don't understand this is they sometimes think, especially if they're sitting with a G, like if they're sitting with a guy like me, they feel like they have to prove themselves by pretending they've been with other ballers, right? They don't want to sit there with a man like me and go, oh, I've never been into a restaurant like this. I wish they would say that. That's the most fucking attractive thing they could say to me. But instead they'll say, yeah, I've been here, da -da, and my friend, uh, and I did this. They, drop, about du this the they drop Dubai and they, then it's they over, They start eh? dropping about fucking other shit that That's they did with their If they say Dubai, you gotta get the check right away. Yeah, it's just like, shut up, shut up. But they don't. So women don't even know what men find attractive because we're in interested in innocence. So he's talking about body counts. It's not even just about the freaky da-da-da. I'm interested if I have an ex experience with a woman, whether it's sexual or non-sexual, I wanna be her portal to the world. I want to be the person who shows her something for the first time. I don't want to fuck a bitch who's been fucked every way she can be fucked. <laughs> Why do I want to, like, well, I have to invent something new now? Backflips? Like, they, 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 I, can it. I, I can do it. Maybe he's doing backflips. I don't know. Yeah. But it's, to me, that's not appealing. You're missing the point. That is, yeah. that is true. That is true. I think uh, do, girls do think it is symmetrical. That, like, oh man, girls, girls like the same things. I, girls, I don't know and you know, you that. know what's worse about chicks on dates? I've been talking about chicks on dates for a long that. time. <laughs> I don't know if I'm allowed to smoke or not, but I don't really listen. Who gives a fuck? Yeah, all right, you're cool. Good. good. You guys want to shout out to Y'all Week let's for letting us uh, smoke in this hotel. <laughs> yeah. Here, pass them around. Kyle, <laughs> Thank you, Y'all Week, for getting yeah, us this around, smoking pass permit. Them no, this is going to be so, amazing. What, where they at? I can talk about chicks on dates for a long time. Because they're fucking The worst date you've ever been on. They're honestly. fucking awful. Well, can you give us a strategy? Worst, then? The worst date. We need to like, cut them and shit. You got a cutter. I got a cutter. It's just there. Can you give us a strategy on how to have a successful well, first, 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 complain, not, first we complain about all the things women do. So first they talk about traveling, which they need to not do because men don't want to hear that. Another thing women do, you know what? Another thing men hate. This is for all the chicks watching this. You know another thing men hate? We hate those uh, social bitches. <laughs> Spend you know what I'm saying? You meet a girl for the first time, right? First time. Going? Here's a test when you meet a bitch for the first time. Say, so what are you doing next week? Correct answer. Oh, nothing. Just home. Attractive. That's what I want to hear. You ain't been nowhere. You don't go nowhere. Just home. What are you doing next week? Oh, well, my friend has a art exhibition, and then my, gir my girl knows this guy oh, who's that. doing this thing, and we're going to this party because it's a him. launch for this new clothing line, and then on Wednesday, it's my friend's birthday. Her name's Chloe. She's so funny, and we're going to go here, and then this. That it starts giving you this busy schedule. Ho. Slut. Shut up. Unattractive, don't wanna hear it, you're a hoe, you've been too many places, you're not home enough, you're not reading the Bible, uninterested. Busy bitches, social bitches, unattractive. Next thing that's unattractive that women do is when they fucking say So hello. you think all social bitches are fucking though? Unless I'm what if they're fucking. What if that, they're out there just grinding? It's about that men don't want that. I'm talking about pure just attraction. She could be an innocent angel doing all these things. The fact that still she's gonna sit there with me and start talking about all these places she goes, I don't wanna hear that. I wanna hear innocence, purity, sit at home, don't do shit. I don't shit. like when they're sluts, but I kinda find it hot when they have their own shit going. You have her own shit going from home. 
from but wherever it is. As long, as long as they're not fucking. Okay, no, but the problem is that you're saying they're not fucking, right? If a woman's going to all these different places and she's attractive, lots of guys are at least trying to fuck her. But not if she's with a top G. Okay, that's right. But she's not with you yet, is she? It's date one. If she is. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So it's, it's date one, right? It's date one. So for the last X amount of months, she's been running all over X, Y, Z, me in X, Y, Z. And then you have to look at her and have enough faith that nobody's ever managed to put their dick in her ever. And the truth is, it really ain't that hard. So it's like, mm. social bitches are worse. I, I, I walked in a restaurant with a girl so and she... And she was like, oh, and then the, the, we're waiting in this little line. There's like two people in front of us, like literally one couple in front of us. The line would have been maybe six seconds. So it wasn't even worth kicking off. Oh, I know the manager. What did it? And I looked at her and go, how do you know the manager? <laughs> oh, I just know him through that. I was like, I just wanted to leave. Like, and now I'm just like, now you know the manager of the best restaurant in the city. You're a fucking, now I got to sit there. You're a hoe now. How many times have you been here? I, I, with who? <laughs> who have you fucking been I, here with? It's off putting. It's disgusting. I see what you're saying. Cause like a lot of the times when men deal with women, I mean, it is sexual. You know what I mean? So like when she, obviously you're probably thinking, oh, you know, the manager. Fuck, are you fucking him or something? You fucking like, him or you've just, been here on how many yeah. dates with who? Or yeah. you and your girls are here drinking or all the manager, the, the manager, time? The manager wants to fuck you. That's a fact. Wait, that's it. But um, it's a, yeah. Where's my lighter? You stole my lighter? He, he's lighting it. Please don't Has like a girl ever brought you back to meet her parents? And if she, yeah. she does, do you, do you act this way? Like you be real? Parents love me. You act this Yo, way though too? I love you. Parents love me. <laughs> Can you show me how to light it? Sure. Do you tell the dad like I'll never stay loyal to your daughter? Nah, but I say I say something else. I say, look, look, she's been out too much. Finally, Save that like for dessert, maybe when that comes, right? Finally, she's under control. Like, <laughs> don't don't worry. She she was living haram, but I'm here now. She's gonna live a good life now. I'm glad I met her before it was too late. I'm gonna save your daughter. Yo. I'm here to yeah, save her life. Like this, Dad's probably like you. Moms might not. Oh, they all love me. You're low-key a lover boy inside, I feel like. No, I, I believe in, no I believe in love in that. I'm just, yeah, I, you're a big cuddler, low-key. You like cuddles, yeah. Completely. I'm a nice guy. Yeah. I'm just, but all, all I'm talking about is just the things women do on dates that are unattractive. And I'm just saying that women do so much shit that's unattractive. And usually, it's 99% of the time they're talking. They're just saying unattractive shit. Talking about where they've been. Da, da, da. And this goes back to the meta point that we want to be their portal to the world. We want innocence. It's what men are biologically attracted to. So if any woman out here is watching it, flick, roll it sideways. Roll, it's a DuPont. Roll it sideways. DuPont. Salim. Fuck is this? Sideways. It's a DuPont, bro. The, from the middle of the lighter, roll it sideways. Oh. Down. No, lower, lower, lower. Oh, In the middle of the lighter. That's it. So, I'm telling this for all the chicks who watch the podcast. Let's say you're going on a date with a guy and you really want to get him. You ain't been nowhere. You ain't done shit. You're an undiscovered diamond. Oh, I don't know. I've never been to a place like that. Oh, how do I open the car door? I don't know how Lambo car doors work. Oh, I've never done this. I've never been there. I've never been on holiday. That is, that's what a man wants to hear. He does not want to hear the story. Oh yeah, I went there once and me and my friends, all four of us went there because it was her party and it, 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 it. shut the fuck up. It's unattractive. Oh, wait, how do you and, and women don't know this. Women don't know this because they'll say all this shit and the man will still bang them. So they think they did good on the date. Oh, he banged me. Well, no, he was going to bang you anyway, no matter what you said. But if you want them to love you, you need to learn to shut the fuck up. This is true because men find innocence attractive except for him. Do you think it's harder? I'd agree with men find innocence attractive. That's. Yeah. But do you think it's I didn't even actually realize that until you said it. Would you, when you go on a date with a chick, would you rather hear her say, I've never been to the club ever, or I go to the club every weekend? Obviously, never been to the but club. But do you think it's harder to find hot girls in that situation? Oh, it's certainly harder to find innocent hot girls because hot girls are absolutely and utterly corrupted because they're corrupt, because they're an asset that men try and corrupt. Men try and find hot chicks and show them the world. Yeah. So you have to be there first, right? It's not easy to do. I'm not saying that it's easy. I'm saying how do you it's get there we, first, though. It's how do you get there first? You just go be a G about it. <laughs> there I mean, are the odd ones. You can find the odd one who's a bit older, who hasn't had too much experience in life, or sat around with some dork for a while, or whatever. But in general, this is also one of the reasons men find youth attractive. You want to blow up the internet? I'll blow up the internet right fucking now. The reason <laughs> 18 and 19 year olds are more attractive than 25 year olds is because they've been through less dick. I'll say this right here on the fucking internet. I don't give a shit. People will sit there and go, oh, you can't say that. Yes, I can. A 19-year-old is more attractive than a 26-year-old woman. And I'll tell you why. Because that 26-year-old has talked to more guys, been to the club more times, been more places, been fucked and dumped more times, more arguments, more heartbreak, more bullshit, more mess for me to clean up. Whereas a 19-year-old might have had one guy from high school, just broke up, she's fresh, and I can fucking put my imprint on her, make her a good person, and without her having to go through all that detriment to learn about life. So what's your key age range? 19 to... It's not, it's not just about the age range. Just the it's example. A, no, I know, but what's your, what's, your pre what's your preference? I mean, hot girls are hot girls, yeah. right? I don't know, hot girls are hot girls. But my point is that older women 
the reason they're less attractive to men, even if men don't instinctually understand it, is because they've been through a whole bunch more shit. And, and we're not interested in dealing with someone else's problems. If you get with a girl who's 26, 27, she's gonna be sitting there going, I know men like you. I've seen what men like you do. You ain't going out today. Yeah, I, I, don't ain't, like, I don't like that. I, yeah, ain't, I, I yeah, ain't dealing. So you're telling uh, me, wait, wait, you're telling me you were innocent and sweet for this dude. You were nice to him. He fucked you and messed you up. And now I deal with the attitude problem you've developed because he got your pussy. I didn't even want him to fuck you in the first place. You should have been a virgin when you met me. Now I'm dealing with your shit? Get fucked. Goodbye. Hold on. Don't you think, though, the, you know, trying to find purity out of women, it kind of is like a low possibility? I mean, it's kind of like when a woman says, I want a guy that's like six feet tall, whatever the case may be, right? There's less of them, and like, it's like, dude, you can't really find a version the, out the here. The best right? things in the world are low probability. It doesn't mean it's not what we desire. We're talking about we, what we desire. And what I'm saying is that one of the best things about status is that you can now get what you desire. So at, at status, most men have this dream of sleeping with endless women. I could, if I decided, could sleep with a new woman every single day for the next 10 years. All I would have to do is reply to my Instagram inbox. It would not be difficult. I could do it. It's not interesting to me. I am more interested in using my status to find something extremely rare, like a woman of innocence. That's what I'm talking about here. I'd rather find one, two, three, four, maybe five, women of innocence and keep them as opposed to just sleeping with endless women because sex really ain't all that interesting to me. I think it gets boring after a while. So that's the point we're making. Yeah, it's hard to find, but just because it's hard to find doesn't mean it's not what every man intrinsically really wants. It's what men really truly want. And what's actually interesting about it all is no matter how innocent the female, she still wants the man to have had experience. If you were to ask a virgin woman, do you want a virgin boyfriend? She'd say no. Or if she'd slept with one man, and she had lived a good life. Do you want a man who lived a good life and been with one woman? Mm, no, maybe he should have slept with a few more. They want you to have been X, Y, Z, right? So you, can, you could have been a playboy and slept with a thousand girls and get with a virgin. She wants you to be that way. And you want her to be that way. It's fine. That's how it's supposed to work. The reason it's all fucked up now is you've got women out here who slept with a hundred dudes sleeping with a guy who fucked like 15 chicks and he wonders why he can't keep her under control. <laughs> well, of course fucking not. Yeah. I ain't going to pull that off. It's hard so, for guys. It's hard for dudes, around, man, because these chicks are just running through dick. It's hard. And if they run through enough dick, they're eventually going to end up on some fuck, a real, a real G's dick. It, it, I, I, we talk about, I, I get called a lot on the internet, one of these red pill guys, and it annoys me. because I that mean? Oh, this whole red pill mans, manosphere. What does get, red pill mean? Oh, something about girls and dating and all this shit. I'm not one of them. But sir, a lot, some of the things they say is true. And the point I'm trying to make is that if, if you get with a woman who slept with enough dudes... Eventually, some of those dudes are going to leave an imprint on her you can't fill. Any, I, I be honest with you. I feel sorry for any man who's with any of my exes. You're going to come along. You, you ain't me. I, I could whoop your ass. She knows I could whoop your ass. You, you can't give her what I give her. You can't do what I can do. And now you're sitting there going, oh, I still love you. And, and, and the deepest, darkest night, she's laying there next to you going, you ain't Andrew. <laughs> you just tried your very that's best. A good feeling, you man. just tried your very best, and that didn't feel like it when Tate did it. And that's it. So like, it's it's like they're widowed in their mind, and you can't truly attach to them because part of them still belongs to someone else. This is what happens at true status. If I run through ten chicks, I get to know I've ruined ten wives, guaranteed ten divorces, guaranteed. Because whoever she marries, she will not be happy with because she will dream of me for the rest of her fucking human existence, guaranteed. That's how it gets. You get to that point at a certain status of man. How do you get to that point? You got, you got to get your shit together. How many push-ups you done today? None. The fuck? They, why many, you ask me stupid many questions? Do, how many how, have you done? Bro, I do push, I'm ready. I live ready. I do push-ups in my sleep. How many push-ups do you do today? I don't really train the gym too often. I do like 500, 1,000 push-ups a day. Whenever, whenever I'm, if I'm ever on the computer, I set myself little targets. So if I'm on the computer and I'll, I'll set a time or I'll say when this song ends or whatever mentally, and then I'll just drop and do as many as I can. You Plus, try to do a 500 to 1,000? 500 to 1,000 a day, yeah. I could do How many can you bang out in one set? Oh, 100, 150. Wow. So what, what else is your like lifting schedule? That's like? it, man. I just do a bunch of push-ups. Just push-ups. bunch of push-ups. If I'm in the gym, I'll train, but yeah. I, I live on the road, so I don't often get access to a gym. You guys don't just go to the gym on like... Well, if I stay in a nice hotel, there'll be gyms, but I do yeah. lots of like car rallies and shit. I'm on the car or I'm about to be on a boat for a week and this kind of shit's hard, right? But you, you can easily so what, find time. So you must time. diet really good then, no? Not really. You eat whatever the fuck you want? I eat basically whatever I want, drink a lot, smoke a lot. Damn. Yeah, but, if, but, but like a thousand push-ups a day is enough if you actually are just a, a drop. And this is another thing that we can go into another point, a meta point. Is that really the key, like just doing push-ups? Yeah, but you have to live with competitive males. This is another point that that's a, this is, it's kind of related to what I was going to say. One of the reasons my life's so fantastic and I'm such a high-performing human being is because I live with other competitive men. You are the sum of the five people you spend the most time with. 
if I'm with a group of five men and all of them are dropping doing push-ups all the time, <laughs> am I going to be the only one who doesn't do it? That's so funny. I'm, I'm asking. It's no, a genuine it's question. True. If everyone gonna, starts I'm busting on push-ups, am I going to be the only guy who goes, oh, my arms are tired, like a bitch? If I'm, I hung with you for five days and you boys are just ripping push-ups all the time, you're going to start doing them, right? Yeah. Now, if we're doing more than you, you're going to try and, you're gonna try and beat us. Yeah. So you're going to do as many as you can. No, of course. You, of are, course. Who, you, you, you are, are who you're around, around in every situation That's right. So if I'm rolling with people and we're all in constant competition, then you're going to stay a competitive male. So the yeah. reason it's easy for me to do push-ups is because my I think fucking, healthy competition is the key to everything. It's the, health, it's, the, it's the key to masculinity. Men for the longest human period of time were in gangs or armies. This is how we've always been. So if my brother, who's bigger than me, drops and starts doing it, well, I'm going to sit there and go, I don't feel like it. Dude. So you have to be competitive. This is another thing that actually ties into things we're talking about where it's actually detrimental when women and men live together completely and exclusively. Women always say this. When women get a real G, they try to attach themselves to you. Don't live with your boys anymore. Live with just me. Come on, we'll be a real couple. Blah, blah. And I understand why they want that because they want to remove you from all the bullshit they're afraid of, right? The girls, the parties, the fun. They want you to completely rely on them so they have power and control over you. But if you live exclusively just with a chick, you are not going to be as competitive as a man. So it's not smart. It's not well, well, it's going to make her happy. That's fine. But I'm talking about purely emotion out of it logically you're not going to be as competitive as a man as if you live with your boys who are competitive if you're training for a fight you don't live with just your chick you live with a bunch of men trainers da, da, da. It's, it's not on purpose right if you're with your boys and you're all competitive and it doesn't then just have to be physical you can be competitive with anything if you live with five millionaires and they're telling you every day how much money they're making you're gonna be really pissed off being broke you're gonna be furious yeah, yeah. you ain't gonna have it 100 well, if you're living with your chick and you're broke but you know she cooks for you she sucks dick good you watch netflix you can get very, very comfortable very, very quickly with very, very little living with a chick. So there's another reason my life is so fantastic is because if I had a woman, no matter how perfect she would be, I'd be like, look, I live with my brother and my cousin and my team. I live with you sometimes. Yeah, I stay with you sometimes, but I, I'm with them because I must compete against them because competing against them means I automatically compete against the world and I automatically win because I'm living with some of the most competitive people on the planet. That's how it goes. So there's another thing that ties into it, right? So the whole frame, what's actually also very interesting is, I need the lighter again if you don't mind, my friend. The lighter? Where is it? Oh. We're talking about status and how women love status, but are you going to be a high status man if you're not competitive? No. So you'll get a chick, you'll fall in love with her. You go, this is a really good one. Let me move in with her. Let me do the right thing. You're going to live with her and you're slowly over a matter of time, years, months, whatever, going to fall off. And now there's other dudes out there who yeah, are that's, hungry. That's true, man. Hey, bro, and that's then you're going to wonder why, you get, why everyone's getting divorced. I'll tell you why. Because you moved in with that bitch and got a belly sitting around eating lasagna. That's why. I will say yeah. that's true. I mean, and, and like I, I had a girlfriend once and I felt like I wasn't doing as much. But once it was over, it was game over. I was just going nuts. Oh, Croatia. Into larger th a bunch of things at large. You can translate this to society as a whole. You can translate this to basic things like fucking... Crime rates, G. You look at some of these countries in the world now where crime is getting out of control. A lot of it is related to the fact there, there, there's military age men or young men in gangs who can't get no pussy because women are just chasing clout. And you've got these young men who can't get no pussy and they get angry and aggressive. And they're like, well, what can I do about this? I need to matter. Get rich or die trying. So there's like, it's, it's all related. Like women are, just, women are, women are required to a certain degree to soften men. I understand that. And having no women in your life at all will make you dangerous. It'll take it too far, but you can't go too far the other way and just become fucking soft. Yeah. What's yeah. your thought on uh, Islam and everything? Cause I know in the, in the Quran and stuff, like you could have up to four wives and stuff. So I've seen you talk about it a little bit, but I, I would like to know, like, what do you think about it? I think it's the last religion on the planet. You think I think it's the right religion? I think it's the last religion. So if it's, the, if it's the last true religion on the planet, then it has to be the correct one. Because I don't think How any How is other, it the last one? It's the last religion because no other religion has boundaries which they enforce. If you, stand, if you will tolerate everything, then you stand for nothing. If your book says X, but you refuse to say the book says this, I'm sick to what the book says. It doesn't matter what the subject is, right? I don't want to get us banned. I think, <laughs> so everyone, I think like, everyone can work it out. If you're a Christian... 99% of Christians are ignoring every single rule inside the Bible C every Christians single day. Christians interpret the Bible, you're saying? Like they like pick and choose what they want to Oh yeah, they'll, they'll, with, yeah they'll try and say, I interpret it differently. I believe in God, but you know, I don't believe in that part. That, uh, that's not what the book says. It doesn't, seem ignore, it doesn't say ignore half of me. It says, follow me. No, Only yeah. Muslims follow their book. No, true, no, true. So yeah, they're yeah. the last religion. Yeah. 
Yeah. If, if, who gives a shit if Christians come along and say, I'm a Christian, you know? Give a fuck. You ignore the Bible. Well, isn't there a lot of Muslims that don't follow the Quran too, there's, though? I'm sure, there's, I'm sure there's a lot of Muslims who don't completely follow the Quran. But I'm saying that if you were to go out there and try and find Muslims who live true to the Quran completely, you can find them. Yeah. You ain't going to find a I single... I think you can find Christians. No, you won't. No, Bullshit. Yeah. Cause, cause Bullshit. Muslim, Muslim really, I mean, not to even no diss on any religion, but like, dude, you're not going to find a, a Muslim slut. Like, that's right. Like a, a woman that's a Muslim that's a slut. Bro, you put me in any fucking church. Give me the hottest church. There's girl. Muslim sluts out there. There's I'm sure there are, but I'm saying he's the point he's making is you can find a bunch of women who adhere to Islam who are still virgins to the age of 25 waiting for an enraged marriage. Oh, yeah. 100%. You will not find that under Christianity. 100%. I think you'll Christi find some. Yeah, you could find a couple. Bullshit, but you're right. Bro. There's probably more Muslims that follow. Christians, Definitely. Christian. There's Christ more devout Muslims than devout Christians. Christianity has no power left. It's a, it's a power. It's the, even the Pope is up here talking about and i i want to make this very very clear i'm not i'm not fucking anti anything i'm not homophobic i don't give a fuck i'm talking about what the book says if the book says man and women lay together and then the pope is going to stand up now and say that you can be a gay preacher does, does that, the book doesn't mean anything now so the whole religion doesn't mean anything so the rules don't mean anything if you're tolerant of everything you stand for nothing the problem is with religion is that it naturally needs to be intolerant for a religion to be a religion which is respected, it needs to be intolerant of certain things. Yeah, but you can't say we're a religion which tolerates everything. Now you have no belief systems. But when was that book written, you know? It does, yeah, completely. But the world evolves. So. Completely. So Christianity has evolved into nothing. Islam <laughs> hasn't. This is the point I'm making. The point I'm making is if you're going to throw your own rules away, you can't stand up and say this is a religion, these are our doctrines, but we tolerate everything and we don't punish anyone for anything and none of it really matters. Are you a Christian? Well, who the fuck isn't? Biggest hoe in the world's a Christian. Porn stars are Christians. Who gives a shit? It doesn't mean anything. It's different with Islam. With Islam, you can't get away with it. Even if you're saying that there's some Islam sluts, et cetera, et cetera, fine, that's cool. That's but people don't stand up and openly disrespect Islam. Oh, hell no. Because they're afraid. So once again, if you don't have rule systems and doctrines and beliefs and prophets, which people are afraid to mock, are you even a religion? People won't disrespect Islam. Nobody will disrespect it because they're scared. Even in a Christian country. What do you, you mean by dis what do you mean by disrespect? I mean disrespect it. Say something. Disrespect it. I, you can walk around if you could wear a T-shirt saying Jesus is gay, right here in Croatia, Christian country, and you will make it out of the country alive. I dare you to do the same thing with the Islamic prophet. Like, yeah, I Kyle. dare you to do the same thing. Kyle. You right. wouldn't make it out of a Christian country alive, an Islamic country alive. Even in Christian countries, you are not safe to do that. You do not disrespect their beliefs. Yeah, disrespecting our lies. Like, no, you don't do that. Yeah, you don't. Uh, Nobody does. So what I'm saying I see is, what you mean. I see if what they're mean. the last religion on earth that people are afraid to disrespect, if their God is the last God on earth that people are afraid to disrespect, then he's the only God that matters. If every other God can be mocked, laughed at, put in video games and fucking shot at, stupid shit, dressed up gay on TV shows, da da ha 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 ha. What kind of fucking, what kind of religion is that? It's a joke. Yo. It's a good point, get, man. How come you're the, like, do you ever get afraid of getting canceled for... Being so, just say, the shit you say. Did you just say? Firstly, let's make a few things. Clear. No, and, and I, and I, I mean, know I understand. But wait, wait, wait. Let me finish. I mean that in the sense where it's like, you you seem to say crazy shit, and your audience gets bigger. When usually people who say some shit that you say, a lot of people would come after them. That's true. But firstly, I don't live in fear, so I'm not afraid of anything. That's but how thing. could you get canceled? Because most of your shit is not even your own accounts, right? Secondly. I'm just breaking down the sentence as a professional because that's what I do. You said fear of getting canceled. So the first word incorrect was fear. I'm not afraid of anything. I don't live in fear. Second thing is canceled. If I was going to be afraid of anything on the planet, the last thing I'd be afraid of is getting canceled. Like I've had people try to kill me. I have real enemies as we stand right now. There are groups of men waking up who want a bullet in my head. I'm, hmm. I'm not, I don't give a fuck if some dork on the internet makes a video saying cancel Tate. Don't give a solitary shit. I have real problems. So just breaking down the sentence. I'm not afraid of shit. Would never be afraid of getting canceled. To answer the meta question as to am I worried that someone's going to hear something I say and then be offended and then people aren't going to follow me anymore. Once again, I couldn't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. I say what I think. These are the things I truly believe. Some people agree with me. Some people don't agree with me. And that's absolutely and utterly fine. You're right. I am doing very, very well despite the fact I'm saying things I'm not supposed to say. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. I am doing very, very well. But I think the reason that is is because people know I'm authentic. People know I actually mean them. I can explain them in a way that makes them hard to disagree with. Even feminists struggle to argue with me on a lot of points. And also, I really do believe the things I say, most people intrinsically, even if it's a lesser version of, even if it's less extreme, agree with me. Most men intrinsically agree with a lot of the things I say. Man, so, yeah. I'm surprised no feminists have ever come at, like, come for your neck. 
no, no, they've tried, but, but how can you come for my neck? How can you come for my neck when their, their basic battle cry and their basic weapons are ineffective? First, let's call him a misogynist. Yeah, I'm a misogynist. Okay, next. You're sexist. Yeah, probably. Next. Okay, I'm going to cancel you. Don't give a fuck. I ain't, got, I ain't got nothing to cancel. I'm on everyone else's account. I ain't got an account. Next. Okay, well, well, we can't call him an incel. Uh, 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 you're a misogynist. Like, it's, it's just a circle. <laughs> they don't have any weapons. Yeah. They have no weapons against me. Yeah. How are you going to sit there to the dude sitting with a bunch of beautiful women in yeah. his mansion yeah. and then say, you're, you're a sexist. You're ugly. You're a three. These chicks are hot and they chose me. I don't give a fuck what you say. I, I'm not interested. It's interesting. It, it's actually very unfortunate. It's kind of unfortunate because women are completely and utterly solely judged on how they look. Like a lot of these feminists are fucking, they're so busted. Like you, if you're going to be a feminist, at least get hot first. Because if you're hot, <laughs> you'll matter. Oh, the hot bitch said this. You ever think those but if the ugly bitch said this. <laughs> oh, you hear what the ugly bitch said. Oh. Have you ever heard of, No one cares. Nobody cares you're ugly. Yeah. Just nobody cares. I understand why you're mad. I'm me, and the hot bitch is with me. I get it. You're mad at God. Dude, That's fine. A, but, dude, but what are you going to do? Cancel me? I don't care. Make a video. Keep making videos. I don't care. There's a direct correlation between that, right? Hot girls aren't going to come after you, but the ugly ones will. Hot, well, hot girls, hot girls love men who are prepared to protect, provide, take care of them. If you're prepared to protect, provide, and take care, to a degree, you see yourself in a position of authority. To a degree, right? It's my, I need to take care of her. I'm going to pay her rent. She's going to come on my boat. She's going to listen to me. She's going to have a good life. You see yourself in a position of authority, so which means to some degree you are misogynistic. Women, beautiful women, love misogynistic men. When you see a 19-year-old Ukrainian on a billionaire's yacht in Dubai, is she complaining that he's the boss and he's in charge? Or is she like, oh, I'm glad he bought this boat. I don't know how boats work. I just want to fucking have a cocktail. I'm, be a misogynist. Cool. You work out the port fees. I don't give a shit. God damn it. So they love misogynists. So the only women who don't love misogynists are the women who are too ugly to get fucked by a misogynist. And then they want to come along and try to cancel you on the internet. I don't give a shit. Cancel me. I will stand up right here and say I am sexist. Now, I don't mean that in a bad way, right? Because I'm sexist both ways. I try and say this all the time, but no one can seem to fathom it, especially not feminists with their minuscule brains. There are certain things in the world that I only trust men with, and there are certain things in the world that I only trust women with. I'm not talking about superiority because superiority is field dependent. Men are better at certain things. Women What's are the better one at thing you'd things. never let a woman do? The top thing a woman you'd never let her do over a man? Oh, there's loads of things, bro. Loads of things I never What's let her do. What's the top three? Give us a couple. I'll tell you the number one thing. So anything that is violence related, women should be nowhere near. So I'll give you an example. My woman is very well trained that if it goes off in the street, she needs to just run and scream. If I say fuck off, leave. And I'll tell you why. I have seen the number of times I've seen a man walking with his chick. Some beef goes. The girl tries to like get in the way. She doesn't want her, her man or the fight to happen. Get him, get hurt. Da, da, da. I've seen a woman try to get in the way. Da, da, da. Then she turns to her own man, gets hold of his arm. Like, don't, don't. Holds his primary weapon when he gets knocked the fuck out. And she's holding on his fucking right hand. Boom. Kale. Head stomped. Wow. Stupid bitch. Now, her intentions may have been pure, but she just fucking ended her man's life. You are not capable and you're not prepared for so the realities physical, of violence. physical altercation. Anything get altercation away. like, fuck off. Don't get in the middle of it. Don't hold on to me. So fuck off Don't try and calm it down. Run and call the police. Run. Uh, but there was, because I see, I see it so many times, bro, especially if, like, if a man's outnumbered, because the chick might love him. She might have truly pure intentions. Might three dudes on her guy. Oh, leave it, leave it. She's in the way and shit. They're just going to hurt you if they're really about it. If they're really from the street, they're going to knock you out now. Like, what the fuck are you there for? Now, now I'll protect you and me? <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. So anything violence related. That's why I don't even like holding hands with a chick. I've seen it happen, man. You're holding hands with a bitch down the street. You don't hold hands at all? If you hold hands with a girl, right? You never hold he hands. He always does. He's a big Don't let, don't let me catch hander. you in a photo holding hands. I, I really, in certain scenarios, I will. Okay, yeah. But like if like I'm walk, by the beach if I'm walking, check? yeah, like if it's yeah. very lonely, sunsets. But if I'm walking, if I'm walking down the street, I don't like to hold hands with the chick because if anything were to go off or happen, her instinct is to just grasp you and hold you, which is fine. Where are you like wanted like that? It's not about it's not about whether I'm wanted like that. You gotta be prepared. Well, to say you don't want to hold hands with a girl because you're worried shit's gonna go down, bro. There's terrorist attacks. There's fuck. There's shit that happens. Guns go off. Cars start plowing through things. I do have enemies. Whatever, whatever. I don't want to think. Fuck. Oh. Get the fuck off me. And then I don't have time. I don't have time for it. For what? Hold hands at home. We're walking now. Professionalism. We're walking somewhere. Stand there. Don't fuck it. If something goes off, leave me to deal with it. 
And, and I've seen women in situations where even when their intentions are completely pure, they're not just a neutral, they are a net negative. A woman who does not properly train will get your ass ended. She will get your ass put the fuck asleep. So see it all the time. So that's one thing I don't trust women with. I'll give you a bunch of examples. I don't let women drive me in cars. Everyone loses their mind when I say this. I'll drive. Never. Has Never. Chick ever drove your Bugatti? Fuck, what the fuck? Who, who is this guy? That's Cap. No! No woman has she ever hard driven enough any of my cars Kat. ever. I call you never Kat. let a girl. You never let a okay, girl. Okay, but wait. Have you There's been a baddie that you've let drive yeah, the Bugatti. Yeah. You got a soft spot, man. Come on. Yeah. I would bet. Okay, would wait. Bet have money. you gotten roadheaded in Bugatti? Gentlemen, 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 gentlemen. I state on my name. I want you to very under, I want you to understand this very, very carefully. No woman has driven any of my cars ever. The cheapest car I possibly own, I would not let a female Are drive. So wait, if why, you think, why though? If you think I'm going to see a chick... And just because she is hot, just because she was born with an innate value, because she was born attractive, I'm going to assume she has the competence to pilot a $5.2 million Bugatti that she's never fucking driven before. And I'm going to allow her to risk that. I'm going to allow myself to risk that asset just to hope she might suck a little bit of dick when I can just fuck someone else. You're out of your fucking minds. Would you, let, would you no, let them drive? Never. What about, what about the fucking lower? Wait, never. Wait, wait, wait. Kylie wait, Jenner. Sorry, no, wait, hold no. on. Hold on. No, no, What about no. one of the lower end ones? Fuck What no. about Danica Patrick? You just think they're going to crash it? It's not. I, one, I think they're going to crash it. <laughs> That's part of it. Two. Why? Have you been in like a bad situation? Because you say your shit's based on life experience. You Have know what? you been in like a bad women driving situation? You know what it is? I'm a, I'm a chess player, right? Yeah. So it's not just about what did happen or what could happen. It's about understanding the reality of what guaranteed will happen. And the fact that... Yeah, that no, I want you to understand yeah, something. That's good. I want you to understand something. The fact that I know what would happen in a hypothetical, even though that hypothetical is extremely unlikely, is enough to prevent me from doing something. So let me give you an example. Let me break this down. Let's say I let the girl drive my Bugatti, but the chance of her well, crashing... Well, Bugatti I get. Bugatti okay, I get. Okay, let's say I let a girl drive a car. car. Yes. Let's say I let a girl drive a car, and the chance of her crashing is less than 1%. Very low chance, what's the big deal? But if she did crash, the results of that crash would infuriate me to a new level in which I've never been infuriated. Is it worth that risk, even if the risk is very, very small? But would you let one of the boys drive it? Yeah, boys, it's fine. I'll tell, you why. <laughs> I'll tell you why. I'm trying to get to the point because people think, you're sure she's gonna crash, she probably won't crash, but you don't understand. It's like me saying to you, would you roll a hundred sided dice, but if you lose, you die. You're like, well, no, the odds are low, but the consequences are big. So even though the odds are low, the consequences are big. And I'll tell you why the consequences are big of a female driving your car. Because females have no innate responsibility or honor. So if a bitch crashes your car, if your boy, you give your boy a car, right? He crashes it. Bro, I fucked up. I'm going to pay this off. I'm going to get to work. I'll get another job. Man, I'm sorry. Da -da -da -da. Bitch crashes your car. Well, it wasn't even my fault. That guy came out of nowhere. I didn't even know. Yo, I didn't even know. And, so and you have loads of money and you have loads of cars. Just buy a new one and I can't afford it. And then, and then if you get too tough to her, look, Bro. you better fucking pay. She's Bro. just going to block you and fuck some other guy. Bro, that's all that's going to happen. Some shit like that. Yeah, he's to pretty me, right. Bro. No, okay, some, he's some, right on some that. Shit, some shit like that happened to me, bro. This girl scratched Yo. my car with her nails. Dang. And I seen it on my camera car. And she tried to be like, oh. Uh, 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 you got like, money. What are you worried that, about? You got that, money. Did she end you up paying right. They have no responsibility. No, I, didn't, I didn't let her. If I'm they were kidding. to take responsibility for the, uh, the issue to the point where, like, look, I fucked up. That's I'm going to so pay true. this. They won't. So why the fuck am I going to take the risk when I know they, that they would crash my fucking supercar well, and not give a shit? But girls don't like confrontation at the end of the day, though. I mean, I, girls go, no. Wrong. Well, girls don't like, girls yeah. don't like responsibility for shit. As a girls girl don't like responsibility. They want another man to be responsible for fucking everything. They want to come along and say we're equal da, 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 until it comes to responsibility. Then, oh shit, someone's got to pay the bill. Well, you're a man. Oh shit, <laughs> that's not our responsibility. Oh, that's not my responsibility. <laughs> that's and that's fine, right? Because it's our duty to protect and provide. Yeah, I'm sexist. I, I agree it's with it's that. our duty, right? I so I, I accept that. that. I don't want a woman who sees herself on my level in terms of responsibility because I find that unattractive. But the point I'm trying to make is I want all that woman drive my car because I know what would happen if she crashed it. We'd end up breaking up because she would not be sorry enough. I'd resent her ass and dislike her for it. She'd start giving me attitude and I'm going to lose the bitch and the car. What's the point? Didn't you, didn't you do, you did say that uh, girls are not good with in, like their instincts or not instincts, but uh, they're not quick thinkers. They're like, not quick you thinkers. You were talking about the pilot. I remember you talking about the woman pilot. You walked out. The <laughs> yeah, I don't like, I, yeah, on my private jets, can't be woman pilot. No, sir. Got me a man. <laughs> And, 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 and once again, so yeah, I'm sexist, right? But no, but, no I'm sexist. I'm sexist. It's cool. I recommend any man out here, do this. Get, get a ball. Get a phone ball. Won't hurt nobody. Say to your boy, think fast. Throw it at him. Five, not, maybe four times out of ten, he'll catch it. <laughs> do it to a chick. 
Just do it. Think fast. Whoa, boom. Straight in her mouth. <laughs> they ain't catching the ball. They ain't doing shit. They're getting hit. Now, uh, now, this makes me sexist. That's fine. But let me just explain something. I also, there are scenarios where I'll make fun of men the same way, saying that women are a million times better in said scenario. So I'm not talking like I hate women. I'm talking about the, in my life experiences, there are certain scenarios where if I want pure competence and I'm looking for the most competent individual, their gender is related to that competence. And it goes the other way also. There are scenarios where I would only trust a woman over a man. And most women, when women first hear what I say, they get annoyed. But if they have a brain, they sit there and go, you know what? He's right. I can't, I wouldn't want to drive a Bugatti that fast. He's right. I wouldn't want to be responsible for the shipping fees of a yacht. He's oh, right. Business. I probably can't catch a fucking ball what? flying at my face randomly. Business. But, you know, he loves me and takes care of me well, and I'm going to do my part and he's going to do his part. It's why, fine. What are, the, what are those things that you would trust a woman with in life? So, women are absolutely and utterly fiercely loyal if she loves you. The reason people get confused because people say hoes ain't loyal and stuff and women ain't loyal. Women are not loyal if they don't, if they don't love you because women are loyal to their own emotion only. So if, if, if they love you and then they stop loving you, they don't give a shit if you fucking live or die. That's just females as a whole, right? But if a woman's truly in love with you, women can be more loyal than anybody. Like I have a very loyal team and I have loyal boys completely. But if you have a woman who's truly about it and truly in love with you, man, have you, haven't you seen all these fucking serial killers and their wives help them hide the body and shit? Like you could get women who are loyal. They're down, down. They're like, okay, let's hide it. Like you can get women who are truly loyal. So in certain scenarios, we need absolute loyalty. You need to use a female. If I were to have kids and I were to drop them off at a play school, would you ever drop your kids to an all-male play school? All men watching the kids? No, no, it's no, weird. No. Yeah. Isn't that weird? It is weird. It's fucking weird. Is You'd weird. only drop to all women, right? You trust them to be more nurturing. You trust them to be more patient. I wouldn't want to drop my two-year-old. If I had a two-year-old. Maybe a couple gay males mixed in. Maybe, but if I had a two-year-old. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. But it's primarily a feminine environment because there's a patience that's there. If I had a two-year-old, I wouldn't want to drop it to an all-male environment because I'd think, well, what if she starts screaming and the men get pissed off and like, the men might lose their temper? Uh, it's weird. It's just fucking odd. No, yeah. So there are certain things that are just set for females. Certain things are just set for males. Women are very, very good at certain things. If I was sick, I wouldn't call my boys. I, you want a chick to nurse you when you're sick. And a woman who truly loves you will sit with you in bed while you're sick, risk getting sick herself, and hug you all night. Women are amazing at a bunch of shit. 100%. But I'm not going to sit here and say that chick can drive fucking car as well as I can. Because she fucking can't. She can't. And I'm not afraid to sit and tell the truth. If it's dark at night, raining heavy, in the middle of the mountains, in Romania, where there's bears and fucking potholes and cows and shit, in a fucking Lambo at three in the morning, she doesn't even want to drive. Any woman who sits there and goes, I could drive this home as well as you, is a dislikable person. Because you're fucked. One, you're lying. Two, you're not going to risk our lives to prove some point. Wreck my car and then be unaccountable for it. Well, you're rich anyway. Get another one. Da -da. Why are you being rude to me? I'm going on a girl's holiday. Bye. And I'm left with a busted Lambo. So the answer is simple. <laughs> you do not drive my fucking cars. The patience I'm, part, yeah. yeah it's bullshit. Um, it's yeah. bullshit. And I, everyone knows I'm right. And any man who thinks I'm wrong, give a chick a car and wait for her to crash it and see how accountable is she is. See if she will get a second job to pay that off. She won't. Fuck no, she will. She doesn't give a shit. Um, so, right. what the fuck? We appreciate that. Can we switch up and talk a little bit more about your businesses? Like the web. We can talk about half of them. Some of them, yes. Yeah, what about the webcam are. business? I'm not even in that. I haven't been in that business for like six years. Hustlers University. Well, first of all, I want to know too, like, how did the, when did you really start like popping off with all this shit? Like, you're right now on the internet, you're fucking everywhere like you're like a fucking viral I'm a, I'm a virus i can't be escaped yeah pretty much right like you're everywhere so like how, when did you start like really popping off i've been on the internet a while man but doing um, what like what did you start first ever doing on the internet content wise all right so uh i've had a youtube and shit but it was small for a while my first money i made on the, on the internet was the webcam thing i've talked about it in a lot of podcasts at length but i can explain again how it all happened this is a long time ago this is maybe Six, seven years ago. This was before OnlyFans. It's before making money on the internet was such a big thing. Like now everyone you meet, every 19 year old meet does some drop shipping, does da 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 da. But back like seven, eight years ago, meeting a guy who made money purely on the internet was quite unusual. Mm -hmm. Everyone had like real jobs and shit. The world's moved on fast. So making money online was not what it was today. And uh, I, did, I, it's a really long story, but fuck it. Fuck it. We're on one of the biggest podcasts in the world. I'll tell it. So I owed some money to some dangerous people. We won't tell that story, but I needed money fast. And uh, I had 70 grand, I needed 100 to stay alive. And I wasn't fighting for a while, that was the time was the only way I was making money. So I thought, you know what, I'm sitting there, I had 70 grand cash in my house, I'm sitting there and I'm like, you know what, sometimes, Tate, God just loves you and you just get lucky. You're gonna go to the casino and you're gonna make the 30. 
So I told Tristan my plan. He's like, bro, what if you don't do it? I was like, bro, if I don't do it, we're fucked anyway. Like, we, they're going to get us eventually. We're going to end up dead. So I took 20 of the money, went to the casino. I lost it all. <laughs> so I came home. Now we owe 50. What did you play in the casino? Right. So I know the odds. I know that statistically the best odds are blackjack. And I know that you can memorize perfect strategy in blackjack, which I've memorized. So I know that you have the statistical best odds in blackjack if you memorize perfect blackjack strategy, which I have done. What, counting cards? It's not counting cards. It's just knowing when to hit, when to stick, knowing based when to on hit, the, when to stand based every, on the dealer's scenario, card showing, yeah. et cetera. Um, so I, but I prefer roulette. And the reason I prefer roulette, even though the odds are trash, is because I feel like in roulette, I have no control. So what, if I lose, I feel I have a clearer conscience because I just put the money down. I ain't got anything to do with it. Whereas if I hit when I go bust, it's my fault. And the fault annoys me. How do so you I, play roulette? Do you just go red or black or do you do ins? No, nah, I do numbers. I have like five or yeah. six numbers. I put a bunch on for like five numbers, not too many, and I just fucking let it spin. Lucky because numbers? I, 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 yeah, lucky numbers, yeah. We got to run some stake after. Yeah, let's do it, bro. I know a lot about gambling. I know a lot about the odds of gambling. I know that there's absolutely nothing you can do on a roulette board that affect the odds of roulette. Mm -hmm. So single zero roulette is 2.7%, I believe. On a single zero roulette, if you play for long enough, you're going to lose 2.7% of your money over a long enough period of time. It doesn't matter how you bet. It doesn't matter if you bet on one number, all the numbers. It doesn't matter if you bet on red, black, blah, blah, blah. That's the stake built in. So it really doesn't make a difference what you do. So I just bet on these same five numbers that are my numbers for personal reasons, and that's it. So I lost 10 grand on roulette. Thought, fuck it, got up the odds. Went to blackjack. Stuck to perfect strategy. Got wiped out. Got fucked. Came home. Now I'm 50 Gs down. So I said to Tristan, we got a week to pay this money. I'm not going to leave my bedroom until I find a way to make 50 grand. So he's like, all right, cool. Because I think it was, was it Newton? One of, the, one, of the, one of the scientists was a really weird guy. And if he had a scientific problem, he'd sit in his room and not leave until he worked it out. So I decided to become Newton. Maybe it was him. Maybe it wasn't him. So I'm sitting in my room. So I started thinking, okay, let me approach this logically. I'm a very intelligent man. Let's do this. What do I need? Let's start at the very beginning. What do I want? Money. What is money? So I started researching what is money. What is money? How does it work? Federal Reserve, fractional reserve banking, interest, inflation, da da. And by the time I got to the end of about a day and a half's research on money, I was really pissed off because I realized that money is bullshit. It's not even fucking real, and I don't have any. So now I'm double mad because I'm like, this is fucking imaginary trash linked to nothing, and I ain't got none. So I was really pissed. So I'm watching all these fucking videos and doing all this research on like assets, liabilities, blah, blah, blah. And then I got a piece of pen and paper. I've been taking notes the whole time. And I got to the point where I was trying to write down my assets. So I got a BMW. What's that worth? 22 grand something. I had a, a rented apartment. Uh, I'm big and strong, but I'm already fighting. I'm smart, but I'm already using it, trying to make money. I'm just writing down everything I have. And I had like these five girlfriends from fighting all around the world, right? So I'd, I'd fly to Paris. I'd knock someone out. I'd fuck a ring girl. And then she'd be like, <laughs> oh, you're the champ. You're the champ. I'm like, yeah, I love you too, baby. And I'd, I'd leave. And they'd think like I was this big baller in London. I mean, I had an apartment and a nice car. My life was fine, but I also had some problems from a previous life, which I can't talk about on the internet. And uh, they were still in love with me. So I was texting all these bitches, whatever, whatever. So I had these five girlfriends in these five different cities all around the world. So I thought, well, are the girls an asset? Well, they have beauty, beauty's valuable. So I guess they're an asset. Maybe they can like lend me the money or get jobs and pay me the money or some shit. Cause I need to pay this money. I'll pay them back, but I need to pay this money. So I wrote them down. Anyway, as I was thinking, I was thinking, what can these, maybe these, can these chicks help me in any way? One of the girls offered to let, lend me like five G's or something. It didn't really help. And I'm sitting there thinking, can these chicks help me in any way? And I'm not a ruthless person. I'm really not an evil person that they try and paint me on the internet. I am not the guy who's going to put a bitch on the track. I'm not the guy who's going to hard pimp a bitch, make her fuck dudes. I'm not that guy. I don't like those kind of things. I don't want anyone to touch my chick. Strip club, maybe, but then to open a strip club, you need money. Right? How the fuck you open a strip club with no money? You need to build a strip club. It takes money. So I'm, I'm sitting there and I'm, I'm Googling on the internet like strip clubs or, or I was Googling like uh, remote jobs, London, trying to see if there was some remote work I could tell my girlfriends to do online remotely to get the money. And I could tell the guys, look, I'll have the money by this day. And then between me and them and more of the incomes, I could pull the money and get the money. Boom, boom. And while I'm looking up remote jobs, in the corner, one of them little videos comes up. Talk to live girls now. You know those fucking things are on the porn sites. Yeah. I've, never, I've never been a porn guy. I still am, not to this day. I don't see the attraction in porn. I've never really been a porn watcher. I can really state with, under God, I've, less, I've watched less than an hour of porn in my life. I don't find it interesting. I don't watch it. I don't go on the websites. You never nothing. ripped porn? Never. It's not my thing. It's just boring. So I've never been a porn guy. So I didn't know how big like chatting to girls on the internet was. 
So I clicked on this advert. There's some chick sitting there talking to dudes, bring money, bring money on one of these websites. And I was like, I wonder how much she's getting. So then I start looking into this webcam thing and I realized these girls are making bank. These girls are making fucking money. So that was the plan. I was like, all right, cool. The girls are gonna be webcam girls. So I originally thought I'll set them all up remotely and they'll do it all from home and send me the money. But the problem with that, I'll have one as well, if you don't mind. Yeah, Gabe, can I get a I'll have one? Thank you. Thank you, bro. It's serving yeah. a couple of so I'll give you Cool, cool. So, but then I thought, you know what? I'm gonna be teaching all these girls how to make as much money as they want. Are they really gonna give me the money? You know, am I gonna end up with the money or is this gonna go bad for me? Plus, now they need tech. I'm gonna have to send them money to buy tech. Do I really trust the bitch to send the money? Is she gonna work hard? Is she gonna set it up right? This might all go wrong. So the only answer is I gotta bring them all to me and I gotta be in charge. So I flew all five chicks in. None of them knew about each other, nothing. Thank you. Sat down at a nice restaurant. Me, Tristan, he flew two, I flew five, seven girls. So look, about to get rich, this is my plan. I'm gonna do this. I put a spin on it, of course. Big boss, big G, da da da, got big opportunity. This money's been invested. I've always wanted you to live with me. Now's your chance, you can leave Paris, you can leave Croatia, you can leave whatever, you come live in London with me, you're gonna do this, you're gonna be rich, I'm gonna be rich, blah, 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 put a spin on it. You're all gonna live here. Of my five girls, obviously they all kicked off. Who's this bitch, who's this bitch, who's this bitch? I'm like, look, you're all mine, get over it. Talk about money now, this is a higher purpose. But you fucked her, yeah, I, f I fucked her, who cares? We're talking about money, we're talking about millions. Get over it. Some of them got upset, they all started arguing, whatever, whatever. Three left, two stayed. And that was the beginning of the empire. The two who stayed, bought some laptops, sat them down, said, look, you're gonna get this much percent, I'm gonna get this much percent. Wasn't exploitation, they wanted to do it. They were like, yeah, this, this could fucking make some money. All right, well, cool, let's try it. And me and these two chicks started the company from the ground up and we started doing 15, 16, 17 hour days. Now, when the girls were at the computer working, I was at the computer the entire time. Because another thing I learned from doing this business, I learned something about women, is that they are intrinsically I don't want to use the word lazy, but I will. They, they, have no, they have no interest in world conquest. They want to be comfortable. If you show a woman how to make $1,000 an hour, she'll think, I can, work a I can work two hours a week. If you show a man how to make $1,000 an hour, he'll think I can make $18,000 a day. <laughs> we want to conquer the world. Oh, we want yeah. all of it. We oh, want my. all of it. Not, not to cut you off, but I agree with that completely. Yeah. And it's only fans has proven that. It's proven it. They, they're lazy about it. There's yeah. like, give me enough for food and rent. Can't be bothered. Lazy. They're 100%. lazy. Yep. So uh, we didn't have time for lazy, right? So <laughs> I was like, no, we ain't got time for that. We're going to make all of the money. But we made this much today. Not enough. There's more money in the world. It's ours. All of it's ours. I got to the point where I was so obsessed with it. I'd be sleeping in bed because the chicks would sleep with me one each side. I'd wake up to go piss. <laughs> and when I, by the time I finished pissing, I was awake enough to say, all right, two hours sleep. That's enough. Get up. Back, back to work. We're going to fucking kill it. So me and these two chicks, and they were about it, right? Because they're getting money as well. Me and these two chicks, we, started, we just start fucking hammering the webcam game. Problem is, another thing I knew, when I talk about what women don't find, that, men, that women don't know what men find attractive, the earlier on this podcast, everything I said, the, po the webcam company I was running proved that per perfectly. The women who were on stream were beautiful, but they didn't have a fucking clue what to say. They were saying all the wrong shit, man. Every day they were saying the wrong shit, and we were losing customers. Everything I was telling you earlier about wanting to be innocent, they're saying, oh, I've been here, I've been there. I'm like, shut the fuck up. You're talking to some dude. He doesn't want to hear where you've been. He knows you can't be a hot, you can't be a 10 talking about that, how you've been to Dubai with, to, to some fucking dude in Minnesota who's fat. He ain't going to ever believe that he's going to get you that way. You got you to gotta, you gotta lie to him. You got to lie to him. She's like, lie and say what? Say that you've never been anywhere because you don't trust men. You can't find a man who's serious. Make him think that if he's serious about you, that nothing else matters. Wow, that's you gotta put a famoose on it. So I'm trying to teach these women and the women kept fucking it up. So I said to, said to him, it's like, you know what? Fuck it, I'm taking over. So what I did is I unplugged their keyboards and plugged a new one in from me behind the screen. So the chicks would sit there and hit a, a keyboard that wasn't plugged in. And me and my brother and eventually some staff I trained would do all the talking. The girls were just pure, just famoosers, just laughing and doing this the titties out, and they were talking to fucking ice cold hustlers. We were taking their money, all of it. And they, they'd come and say, well, what kind of, bro, all of it. We were fucking milking them dry. Women haven't got a clue how to famoosa dude. They don't have, because they rely on their looks. 
They don't have any of the intellect. They have no game. Nothing. <laughs> they're some, though, they're, they're nothing. They're some. Nah. You get, you get a man. You get a man with game and give him a female's body, a female avatar. We he win. will fuck a guy up. I had these guys selling their houses, life savings, loans, all of it to me. Give me it all. So, like, and it's, it's basic shit, right? You'd have Did a you guy. you feel bad or no? Fuck no. To give a solitary fuck. Would you tell like yo, I don't give a fuck if if you if you run an alcohol store you can't feel bad for people that pay no, for but, that shit yeah if, no, you run but, a, if you run an alcohol store yeah. and 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 most of the people you sell to enjoy alcohol but a couple of the people you sell to are alcoholics do you feel bad no nah. no right so if you come I'd be going you, to hell if you come if you come and you enjoyed it and spoke to the girl and spent what you could afford to spend cool if you turned up and you're an idiot and got a loan out is that my problem no so I'm for moosing these dudes right so the guy would be like what kind of what kind of guys do you like. And if he was a young man, I'd say, I can't believe I'm talking to some young guy. All these old creeps are on here. Oh, my God, you're so handsome. Why that's, are you even here? So if he was an old guy, I would say, oh, my God, I'm finally glad to talk to you. All these young creeps keep coming and talk to me. I want a guy who's serious, who's ready to settle down. Oh. I know older men will settle down. Da-da. Sell the dream. Sell the dream. Sell the dream. We got to the point where we had these guys falling in love with my models. Serious, big time in love, right? Sending crazy money. And they were convinced they were going to meet the chick. This is almost where I kind of felt bad. Because they were like, can we meet? I've sent you $200,000. Can we meet? Can we meet? Can oh, we meet? And, and the problem is- What was is, the most that one person sent to a model? Total. Maybe, million? Wow. Wow. About a mil in about a year? I know you don't feel bad at all. Why the fuck would I yeah, care? I don't feel bad either. So, uh, thank you. Damn. So, um, they'd want to meet the chick, right? I only did a meeting once ever. I had a big customer with my best girl. How much did that cost? He paid 50 G's for dinner. Just dinner. It was clear it was just dinner. He booked a really nice restaurant in London. It was me, my brother, and about four of my other kickboxing boys on different tables because he doesn't know what we look like, right? So he's gone to dinner. She's sitting at the table. He's sitting at dinner. He's surrounded by killers, bro. <laughs> he didn't even know. Casey was, Casey was weird or tried to drug her or some shit, right? So he sat there at dinner, had the dinner, whatever, whatever. Dinner ended, nothing happened. But after they meet the girl once, the fantasy's now ruined. Like, so now they're like, okay, when can we meet again? When can we meet again? You said you liked me. You said you loved me. Hey, why don't you stay over? They start getting really pushy and you end up like losing the customer because you can't keep meeting him without nothing happening. Girl doesn't want anything to happen. So you got to kind of keep it in the fantasy world. So we learned from this. After this, girls cannot meet guys under any conditions. So what the girls would do is they promise meetings. And here's, maybe this is a bit bad. Here's where the famous would start. So it'd be good, like I had a lot of girls who worked for me and the best was like the Ukrainians or the Russians. It was amazing. Cause they'd get some guy, fall in love, da-da-da. they'd arrange today to meet, all this shit, da 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 Ah, I need a visa. Okay, get a visa. I need money for a visa. Okay, how much is a visa? It's $900. Oh no, but it's not $900 cause I went to the embassy, they think I'm a, a risk and I need a, a return flight there and back and I need a hotel and I need to have spending money in my bank account they won't let me come. Or how much do you need? All right, 10 grand, boom, it's 10 Gs, boom, bang, thanks. Wow. Go to the embassy, take a picture outside the embassy, boom, come back. They rejected my visa. They said we have to wait two weeks. After two weeks, they'll give it to me. Okay, baby, boom. Two more weeks of tips. Boom, 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 boom. Because now he thinks he's going to fuck, right? He thinks he's going to get the girls. So now he's spending more than ever. Two weeks, two weeks, two weeks. Two weeks come. Some other problem, whether it's visa or whatever, whatever. We make up some bullshit, right? All Just, these OnlyFans chicks can learn from you, man. Oh, no, man, no, bro, but you know, like, like a free, people, people, people watch free people, OnlyFans tutorial. Yeah, here people, in the, in the people, people, people would say, why did those girls work for you? Because the girls would work for me. And at 50%, because it was 50-50, would make millions per month. If they worked for themselves, they'd make fucking nothing. I was the best in the fucking game. What? Me, and I had a whole team of staff. Yo, the, girl, the girl would only work six or seven hours a day online. So how but, did it end? Uh, bro, the story's just begun. Oh, fuck. <laughs> you want me to tell you? I can shut yeah. up if you want. Wait, you could have double dipped and started a coaching to coach these guys too, right? I, I could have, but fuck, I'll give it all for free, because I'm rich already. But so <laughs> the girl would be online for six or seven hours, but then when she logged off, was sleeping or whatever, on her WhatsApp, I'd have staff. She was online 24 hours a day. Her WhatsApp, her this. She was famousing when she was asleep. We were bringing her money for the fucking sky. We were promising all these meetings, all these pictures outside of embassies, all this shit. Eventually, the girl, what she would do is she'd say, oh, I don't want to go embassy. She'd give a really lame excuse to try and provoke the man to get angry. So she'd say, the embassy want me to come back, but I have a headache. That was the one we'd use. <laughs> He'd be like, I just sent you a million dollars. You promised you were going to come. You said you had to delay. Now you're saying you have a fucking headache and you won't go to your appointment to make him mad on purpose because that would annoy any man. And then that's what we needed. We need the little trigger. And we go, why are you being aggressive? I'm not being aggressive, but you're not serious. Da, da, da. And then we'd say, but you know what? I, I really like you and I'm flying to the other side of the world by myself. And now you're being aggressive and now I'm intimidated. 
and we'd flip it on him saying, well, now you're being scary. No, I'm not being scary, but you, you know, it's your appointment. You're supposed to go, yeah, but I feel sick and you don't even care. Female bullshit, female mother, bullshit. And flip it on him, oh flip it on him. And he'd get fucking furious because we were really good you're at playing fucking- both sides. Yeah, poking him to the point where he'd go like, you're a fucking scammer, you fucking scam me, get really mad. I can't believe you think I was a scammer. I was gonna come, I went to the embassy. You're a fucking liar. Every man in my life has only lied to me. I thought you were different, da da da. Big, big beef, big argument, yep. big argument. But here's the thing. The guy would get pissed off, right? And leave, stop tipping her, stop coming to her. But for these men, that's the only chick in the world, the only hot chick in the world who talks to him. Maybe it takes a week, maybe it takes two weeks, maybe it takes three weeks. He's in bed at night alone, jerking off, looking at her old videos and pictures, watching her stream again from another account so she can't see it's him, sitting there going, maybe she was gonna come. Maybe I just got too mad yeah, when she had a headache. Maybe, maybe, I, maybe I should have been a little bit more patient and she would have been my girlfriend. And 100% of the time, in less than three months, they'd be back with an apology, a brand new pile of money, and the cycle would repeat. We fucking killed the game. Millions of dollars a week. And it was not just because I had beautiful girls. It's not because webcam is easy. It's because I am a genius, and I put together an apparatus of genius behind the avatar of beauty, and we fucking <laughs> conquered the internet. Wait, so did you, did you get these girls back? <laughs> Say again? Did you give these girls like kind of like a cut? Yeah, so no, one hundred percent to you. Well, we can talk about this. So the girls who worked for me purely just work were working for me purely just work. Okay, right? So that they, only applies to a relationship. Yeah, so that'd be fifty percent. If a girl was my girlfriend, she'd be working. I'd get all of it. Now that doesn't mean she wouldn't have a nice life, right? Because she's my chick now. So like, why would they even do it if they give you a hundred though? Because 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 what's the point? Uh, yeah. It's helping you out. I mean, no, it's, it's all about helping me out. It's about we are now a power couple. We're a team. And I'm gonna spend the money on you. I'm gonna spend, it, it, I'm, I'll buy you a bag, I'll buy you shoes, whatever. I'm investing, I'm in, it's not even, it's 100%, I'm in charge of the money. Yeah. Not that you can't have things, it's not that you can't do things, it's not that you're fucking flat broke. I'm in charge of the money. 100 G's just came, what do you wanna buy? Oh, I really want this bag. Well, you bought a bag last week. I really want this one. Okay, well, here's the bag. What else do you need? <laughs> Nails, food, da da da. Okay, cool. Well, I'm paying the rent. Is there anything else you actually need? No, all right, then let's invest this. It was more very much like I was in charge of the money. Otherwise, she was just spunking it on dumb shit. So it wasn't, I say the 100% thing, everyone loses their fucking mind. But basically it was the more intelligent, competent individual inside of the pair the was in charge of the money, me. And, and she also- has, has that, Have you ever pulled that off? What do you mean pulled that off? Like, have you ever dated an OnlyFans chick that's given you 100% of the money? All, all the time. No I'm, way. I'm, I'm describing to you right now, my, my, all the chicks gave me all the, all the money. And I was in charge of it. So do you put your bank info on their OnlyFans account or do they pull it out and they then pull wire it out to me? They wire it to yeah, you. Yeah, no problem. No way. What, no, if, they, no what if they cheat you? How do you respond? That. Wait, what if they cheat you? But this is the interesting point. The reason this dynamic worked is because the girl understood that she wasn't making the money. It was my money. Because she understood that she is nothing but a face to a genius apparatus I've created. She that knows, is some, she that knows is some psychological she, crazy. She could be replaced. I can take another girl of equal beauty, sit her down in front of that keyboard, which ain't even plugged in, bitch, and do this and make the same fucking money. You are lucky to work for me because I can replace you. You cannot replace me. There is no other genius on the internet doing this the way I do it. So it's my money. It's my staff who've been up all night while you're asleep WhatsApping this dude. It's my team who, tell you, who know what to say. It's me who's been in charge of the plan to make sure he sends X amount before X. Because it, it, it was a real business. And the reason we were so successful is I was never thirsty about it. Most dudes in those scenarios would be trying to live like Dan B and all this shit. I love what he does. Cool, guys a G. But I wasn't trying to live like that. I didn't want to go to the club with a bunch of girls. I didn't want to be seen on the street with a bunch of girls. I still have enemies at this point. I don't mean walk around with fucking beautiful women. It's a liability. I was low key, hiding, pure business. I wasn't fucking all the time. No, work. We were there to make money. The fact that I was surrounded by naked women did not care. I was unfazed, unfazed. You put me in a room with 20 of the most beautiful women you've ever seen, stark naked, didn't give a fuck. Walk straight in, spreadsheet, walk straight out. Didn't care. Did you I was, smash one of them? Of course no? I fucked, but I'm saying I was about the money. <laughs> I approached it as a professional. I was a professional to the game. That's why we killed it. Another thing we did. We don't talk about psychology. I can tell you, man, I can talk about this forever. Wait, can I ask you something real sure. quick? What's the most expensive thing you ever bought a girl? This is straight on TikTok. No. Um, I bought some really expensive shit for girls. But you have to also approach it to bound to how much she made. So like if a girl made a million dollars in a month and I bought her, let's say, a 50 grand watch. So yeah, I bought her a $50,000 watch, but she made a million dollars. So does that, does that really more. count? That's, you're gonna go more. That's pretty cheap. It's yeah, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's cheap. cheap. So yeah, it's like, 
uh, like I've never bought a girl anything too crazy. Never bought a girl a, a car. The reason I'll tell you, okay, so I have so many angles we can go from here. The reason Do you like I splashing on chicks though. I, I love my woman to experience the world through me. Yeah, that requires money. But I would never like get with a brand new chick and just start buying her shit. Fuck no. Fuck no. But no. if a woman truly loves me and there's an experience she's yet to have, I would love to give it to her. I'd love to give her something she's never had before. But if I get a chick who's already had a bunch of it, I'm less motivated. In fact, I know she ain't going to get shit. If I get with a chick who's had a bunch of ballers before, then she can fuck herself. Fuck her, get by, goodbye. Because she ain't worth shit anyway. But if I get a chick of innocence, I'm interested in showing her the world in all realms, including financial. That's the answer to the question. I think you understand what I'm saying. Yeah, she loves you. me. Boom, boom, boom. It's impossible for me to be with a chick and her not have a good life, right? How can I have a chick with me? She's my girl and my life's so fantastic. What, she's going to get a taxi when I get in my car? Yeah. Like, get, not get on my jet? She has to fly commercial? Like, I'd have to be a real weirdo to prove a but point. Maybe yeah, she used to be earn weird. that. She, being near me, your life's good. If you're anywhere near Tate, you're living good. But what are those signs, though, that make you see that, like, oh, this girl actually loves me? Oh, that's easy, bro. I've just been around the game. All the these things I'm telling you, I've, I've lived, I grew up, this game's my game. Are I know the game. Are you ever gonna get married? You, you, th go ahead, yeah. Are you I gonna get married ever? I'd never get married, no. Why not? I, I, don't, see, I don't see the tactical advantage to getting married. If I decided to be loyal to a woman and be with her forever, that's fine. If I decide to have children with a woman, that's fine. If I decide to have a house with a woman and live with her, sure, possible. It's not optimal, but it's possible. But the idea of just getting married in and of itself is completely and utterly fruitless. I think it's for the woman. The women enjoy it. But women enjoy lots of things when they don't have to pay for it or organize anything. Sure, she gets to show off on Instagram, organize nothing, waste all my money. And now the government is involved in a new area of my life I don't want the government involved. The government is already involved in when I register a car, all my money, bank accounts, when I get a job, when I buy a house, government's everywhere, right? Don't I just want to at least be able to walk around with my dick without the government being involved? Now if I put my dick in another bitch, my wife can go and say, I have proof he put his dick in another bitch. Go to a lawyer and go to the government. He owes me this. Infinite, that's adultery. Automatic this much percent. Da, 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 da. So now the government is watching my dick? Leave me alone. No, <laughs> no, leave me the fuck alone. Like, if I love her, I love her, she loves me. Love you very much. Love you too. Cool, we love each other. That's fine. Okay, would you, would you say though, like back to the other question, would you say that if a girl is doing things for you in a way where they kind of bring value without you having to like coach them? Would you say they love you? I, I, I've, I've experienced a lot of female love in my life. I know, that I know when women love me, and, and it's not hard to make a woman love you as a man. I don't think it's really that difficult. I have a lot of women who love me, but this is actually the meta point that I was going to say before you said that. If a woman truly loves you, she'll stay with you without that shit. So the women who go to their man, marry me or I'm leaving. Yeah, they're, they're done. Then yeah. why the fuck are you marrying a bitch who's already thinking about, she's already given you conditions to fucking keep the relationship. If a woman truly loves you, and you sit there and say, look, I've been around the world. I'm about it. I know things you don't know. Signing that piece of paper is bad for me. It's also bad for you. It's bad for business. Shut the fuck up. What about okay, but how do I know you love me? Because I tolerate you. Shh. Done. No fucking wedding, no bells, no dress, no bollocks. It's all bullshit. And men fall into this trap, but no man wants to get married. This is another thing I'm going to say. And I, I don't, I'm not shitting on guys who get married. Get married. It's your prerogative. I don't give a fuck. I'm just saying me. I truly don't believe any man actually wants to get married. He wants his woman to be loyal. He wants his woman as a wife. He doesn't want to be a husband. He just wants to do it. So she's less likely to cheat. It's a degree of insecurity. Well, if I marry her, she'll know I really love her. And maybe then she won't leave. If you really know your bitch ain't going to leave you. If you knew in the stars, if God came down and said, she's never going to leave you. Never going to leave you. She's yours. You own her soul. Fuck Would you marry her? Like, Fuck no. Why? She's mine. It's done. I know my chick ain't leaving me. My chicks ain't going nowhere. So See, why the fuck am I marrying them? How, how did you like initially pop off in this recent success? Like when did it start? I decided. Content wise. Like I decided -wise. to go overt with my conquest about six months ago. Six months. Six months ago. What was your strategy? Bro, that's worth billions of dollars. If I were to tell you right now what I've done, that'd be worth. So do, you, do you understand how many people want to do what I have done? Yeah. This is unprecedented. This has never been done before. It hasn't been I've done. I've gone from obscure internet figure with a cult following of fans. My, my, my fans, because I have my YouTube channel for a while, my guys who follow me from back in the day are like, I am so furious. I used to walk around and say, have you heard of Andrew Tate? And everyone would say no, and I'd tell them what genius you are. Now everyone knows you're a fucking genius. Oops, spilled the vodka. You ru you've ruined it. You've ruined it. Like all my, the, my old school fans are pissed. Can we, get, can we get a lady to clean this up? Or? We'll put that on the Yacht Club's tab. Yeah. The yeah, Yacht Week. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Yacht Week. Thank you, Yacht but, Week. But like I decided to go over about six months ago. I put together a strategy and a plan. It was extremely strategized. It was planned. Is that public though? The plan. Yeah. No. I thought it is kind of public. Oh, no? strategies. Oh. I, I, I've heard everybody say. Everyone has these theories. You can give, come out with your Here's theories. Your theory. Here's the theory that you 
offer to sell your content to pages. Pages would post your content and that would help them get views. That, okay, well that's not true, one. But two, you also have to keep in mind that most people can't do what I can do because most people cannot be as entertaining as I am by simply just sitting down and talking shit. Definitely. Yeah. So I can sit down and talk shit and be extremely polarizing. So I have unlimited free content. Yeah. You can give me a camera and I can sit for 12 hours a day and talk at that camera. I have unlimited free content, which makes it easy. Like if you're a big YouTube channel that do like these giveaways or, or you do these big pranks or that you, it's, you need planning, you need Definitely. a Lambo, you need a girl. That, me, I can just get a camera and just start talking. iPhone. Yeah. And I'll get a 10 million views. Crazy. So that's the first thing. So I have unlimited free content is the first thing. So your content's really easy to make. It's super easy to make. Which is dope. Which is dope. The easier your content is to make, the more competitive you are. Yep. I'm super competitive because I need an iPhone. You give me an iPhone and half a subject and I'll just start running my mouth. And people, for some reason, like to listen to me for free. I have never paid for an ad. I've never paid for a shout out. I'm not paid to be on any of these big Instagram pages I'm all over. I ain't paid for shit. They're all giving it to me for free because they're like, this will get us views. Tate. That's, that's it. So is that yeah. not correct then? But you're saying I paid them. No, no, no. I'm saying they reach out to you. They don't even reach out to me. They just fucking steal it. And I don't give a shit. That's another thing that's a big part of it. Is it like an organized effort of It's an organized pages? effort. I put together or a, do you even monitor them or not? I put together a plan which was extremely well executed. This is not an accident. And I can't tell you exactly what I do. But one of the other things I did, which is a superpower, is that I don't have accounts. Yeah. Most people, let's say you have a YouTube channel. You don't want people to plagiarize your shit. You want the views. You want your money. You don't want people to rip your video, mm -hmm. use it, da 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 I don't have an account. Everyone can steal my shit. I don't give a fuck. You steal have a it. YouTube account though, no? It's I have a YouTube channel, somewhere. but even then, I don't, I, don't, I don't think it's even monetized. I don't take yeah. a single penny from it. Ours is, we've never made money off YouTube. Yeah, that's ads. what I mean. So, right, so I, I don't need money, right? So if someone were to come along and decide to take my video and chop it up and use it for something, I don't care. Someone were to come along and make a video to, attacking me, da da da, I ain't gonna try and copyright strike. Don't care, do it. Everyone can do whatever the fuck they want with my shit. So I'm free game, right? So it's entertaining and it's accessible. That plus my genius battle strategy, we implemented it in January. January 1st is when we began and I am now the most famous man on the planet. I'm more Googled than Donald Trump, Joe Biden. Look it up. I'm more, I'm the most Googled man on the fucking planet. Really? Yeah. That's yeah. fact. I, fa I look up Donald that. Trump, Joe Biden versus they, they Andrew Tate and Googles. They, they, someone exposed that on a podcast and verified that's correct. Yeah. So, so I'm the most Googled man on the that's planet. That's crazy. I've conquered the world. And so then, is it mostly a TikTok strategy or social media as everything. a whole? I own all of it. Does it bother you? You don't make money from this shit? Well, you I'm, make money in, through your ventures, right? Right. So yeah, I already have. What ventures do you have right now? Yeah. I can't tell everybody everything I do, but I have enough money forever. Like I, I'm at the point of money now where it really truly has no value. Everything in the world to me is free. And I grew up very, very poor, so I can still remember being poor. I grew up with nothing, truly. My family, my mother and father, they got divorced when we were in Indiana. My mother moved back to England. My father stayed in America. My father unfortunately died. My mother and my uh, brother and my sister, we grew up in a, the free houses that the government give you, so the projects of England, in the town called Luton, which was voted the worst town in England with the highest crime rate, blah, blah, blah. Lived in a shit area, grew up with nothing. And I'm, I've done all of this completely myself. No financial help, never got a loan from a bank, a friend, nothing. Did all of it completely by myself. So I remember being broke. And I really, really am thankful for those poor days because if it wasn't for the days being poor, being rich would suck. 100%. It, it, it's, bro, it's fucking, it really ain't that cool. It's only cool because you can do shit and say, do you remember when we couldn't afford to do this? Yeah, yeah. Otherwise it's boring, right? So I'm at the point now where absolutely everything in the world is free. If a new car is launched and I see it, let's say it's a brand new Lamborghini, right? In fact, I did this yesterday. They're replacing the Aventador. There's a new Lamborghini. It's a twin, tur it's hybrid. It's a thousand horsepower. That's all I know. I saw an advert, a YouTube video on YouTube in the explore page. I didn't even watch the video of the review of the upcoming car. I didn't even watch the four minute video. I just saw a new Lambo's coming, text my Lambo guy and said, I'll have one. I don't know how much it costs. I don't need to choose options because I take every box. Every option, give me one. It'll come out the bank and I won't know this. It'll has, turn up, has the, everything's free. If I want a Lambo, it's free. If I want a little jet, it's free. Give me a yacht, it's free. Besides mega yachts and mega mansions, literally everything on the planet is free. What's yeah. your main like public venture that you're doing right now that you could say? All right, so I do a few things online. So I, I own some casinos. I saw your website yeah, too. Yeah, so I own some casinos in Romania. That's one of the first things I do. Really? But I don't want to talk about that in too much yeah. depth. But I own some casinos in Romania. I also have some more traditional wealth income methods. I've got a property portfolio across about six or seven countries. Um, I'm also an extremely capable individual. In fact, I wish I had my business card on me to give it to you. 
but I'm the guy that people can come to that can fix things. So I have a lot of people with a lot of money who will come to me and say, look, the war is going on. I need to get someone out of Russia into the Europe. Uh. Or look, uh, I got to move this money here. That In a very legal way, I know enough people to help do those things. So I can make a lot of money with that. Online, I have two serious ventures. One is Hustlers University and the other is The War Room. The what do you war- do on those? Okay, so The War Room is, is kind of like the Illuminati, but cooler. The War Room is, is, very, the war room is very difficult to explain, but it's, it's a private network. It's a network in which you must compete for your place. When I was saying earlier on this podcast about living with competitive men, the war room's the online version of that. So you have men, you join, you pay, you join. There's tasks, tests, things you must do to keep your place or you're booted. Such as? I can't tell you. Oh, you can't say it's that no. private? How much does it cost to join? It's like 5,000, it's not that much. It's five grand to join, but you can get kicked at any moment without a refund. So the point is that it's constantly winners, right? The losers are always peeled off the bottom. So the winners get more and more competitive. So we're cycling into a group. So, I mean, now we, so now we have a point where we have... Does that relate to the TikTok fan page portfolio? War, the War Room are involved in everything I do. How many users are there? We have over 2,000 members. Over 600 millionaires. What about a hustler? And we, and, we have extremely, and we have extremely important people inside of the War Room. You can go to the War Room. I go to the War Room for the problems no one else can fix. Like when the Ukraine war, when the, when the, war, got, when the war kicked off in Ukraine and they closed the borders or the borders panicked, we had seven war room members of Ukraine. We got them all out in 24 hours. Then we send in jets. So the war room helps the, you get shit done? The, the war room gets shit done globally. So that's what the war room is. It's a network. And you'll I don't give them say some kickback on shit if you get it or something? Say again? And you'll give them some kickback on money that you get or something like that? Yeah, it's, it's, the war room is a private network. That's the most I can say. Kind of imagine the Freemasons of old, but better. So when you first join the war room for the first six months inside, you're just going to be doing things like why it's kind of like Mr. Miyagi wax on wax off. Why am I doing this? And then you're going to start to learn. Aha, this is useful. Uh, I bet and you the people, people who are too lazy to want to join the that. people who are too lazy to do the, I wax fucking on, join, the people who are too lazy to do the wax on wax off are kicked. How powerful is the network? Huh? I'm alive. Are we allowed to talk about anybody else who, who's in there? I want to, I will never tell you about any of the members, but let's put it this way. I'm still alive. Right. So, and, 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 uh, there's been serious attempts on my life. Do so you, the, war room is, the war room is the most powerful network on the face of the planet today, bar, bar governments. Are you trying bar to keep a nation up? state. The war room is, bar a nation state wanting you dead, the war room is the, is the number one enemy you wouldn't want you coming after you because they will get you. We are uh, that good. Are you trying to keep up being like as viral as you are forever? Or not forever, but like for... This is stage oh. one of a three-step plan. So I'm going to be viral for a little bit longer and then step two begins. The conquest is continuing. So this own, is just the beginning. The world. I like a lot of people are say like, you're going to fall off soon. This is just sure, 15 sure minutes. No problem. What's your take on that? That's fine. I've been around the internet for a very long time and I'm building systems which are very sustainable, right? The war room is a very sustainable thing. I don't care if all this virality gets me one good war room member who can do what I need him to do or fill a gap in our organization, which are very few and far between, then I still win, right? So that's the war room. Then we have Hustlers University. The reason I started Hustlers University <laughs> is because I was arguing with someone about how pointless the modern education system is. I think the modern, modern education system is nothing but an indoctrination machine. I think they use it to indoctrinate the youth. I think it's a waste of fucking time. What, I, to brainwash people? To brainwash people, of course they do. And it's actually, because I can talk forever. The world's a spider's web, right? Everything extrapolates from, from everything else. And most people are not capable of understanding that nearly every single idea or habit or lifestyle which is propagated mainstream by the matrix is done so with a Trojan horse. So even the educational system. Meaning with a hidden agenda? With a hidden agenda. So even if you look at things like women's rights, women need rights, women need protecting, women should be equal under the law, completely agree. They said they wanted women to work so people could pay more taxes, no? They want people to work so they could pay more taxes, double the tax base. But you know what else they wanted them to work for? Get the kids out of the... To get the kids out of the influence of the parents, right? When the woman's at home and the father's at work, those women, uh, sorry, those children are learning from the woman who's probably learning from the father and you get to instill your own beliefs in those children. Government doesn't want that. The government wants the children to belong to them. So they get the woman out of the house and they send you to school for as long as possible to reprogram you. This is why you will see YouTube videos of children arguing with their parents and their parents will say, that's not true. And the children will say, I learned in school that a man can be a zebra or whatever they learned. And they start arguing with their own children. You don't own your own children's minds anymore because your children's mind is owned by YouTube and the school, right? And the school will say to you, if your parents ever yell at you or get aggressive to you, you come to me and we'll, we'll tell the police. Don't worry about that. So they're doing it to brainwash the children, right? Because this is how you control the future. So the whole educational system in and of itself is a scam. 
They use feminism and the whole women's rights bullshit to get everyone's children into the indoctrination, indoctrination machine. They keep their, you there as long as possible. They want you to finish in debt because then you've got to get a fucking job and become a good slave. But they don't teach you anything of value. Nobody learns anything of value in school. And everybody intrinsically knows this. Even the people who disagree with me, I said, if you see me pull up in my Bugatti in a gas station, do you look at me and think, wow, he went to school? Fuck no. You no, think no, drug no. dealer, gangster, scammer. <laughs> yeah. You think I'm doing something illegal because you understand if I was staying within the paradigms of the system, I couldn't have possibly achieved this. The only way you can fathom I've done it is by imagining me as an outlaw. Because you know within the paradigms of society, I shouldn't have even fucking done it. That's how much you know school's a scam. You don't look at someone rich and respect them thinking he went to school. The people you are learning from in school aren't even fucking rich. Your business professors never had a business. They're brokies. <laughs> They're fucking broke. So school's a scam. And it's the biggest scam on earth. And the reason it's a scam, before I get into the meta point, the reason it's a scam is because it operates in a vacuum. It operates in a vacuum because it cannot be fairly compared to any other service. So you can get a loan for school, but you can't use that money for anything else. Because if they were to open it up and put the school, the education system into the fair market of capitalism, it would fail. If I were to give you a hundred grand and say, you can get a degree or you can buy a crypto or you can start your own business or you can do anything you want with it. Who's going to choose a degree? No one. Probably. Nobody. So they say you can only get the money if you use it for education, which allows it to operate inside of a vacuum. Because it operates inside of a vacuum, it is one of the few things on the planet which is allowed to be non-competitive. It's not competitive against any other investment. Everyone knows that. But you can only get the money for that. So you can't get the money to invest in anything else. So you end up doing it, learning something that is outdated, slow to learn. There's more, it doubly inflates. There's more degrees every single year, meaning the value of a degree decreases. And the price goes up every single year. So it's worth less each year. It costs more year on year. There's no other industry where you can even get away with that. You get wrecked, except for the educational system. So I was explaining why it's all a fucking scam. And people say to me, well, what else am I supposed to do? I don't know what else to do. I said, I'll tell you what, I'll start a school and my school will teach you how to make money. Because what do you want to work for? Oh, I want to work for my passion. Da, da, da. If you want to work for your passion, fuck off. What do you want to work for? <laughs> I want to work for money. You're the guy I need. <laughs> You want to work for money because there's people who really don't want to do what they enjoy. That's fine. You're never going to be rich that way. Go be a vet. A vet, you might be rich. Go work in the zoo and clean up pig shit because you get to be near an elephant. That's your thing. Go do it. Your passion has nothing to do with getting paid. So the people who are serious, the people who are smart enough to go, I only work because I want money. I don't care what I do. I just want money. Cool. Then you can come to my school. Now, my school is competitive. My school does not operate inside of a vacuum. It's $49 a month for Hustlers University and we teach 18 modern wealth creation methods. We teach 18 different ways to make money. In the modern world, which is very different from the old world, which is a key point because people always say, well, my parents told me your parents lived in a different fucking world. Your parents bought a house for $60,000 and now it's worth half a million dollars. So of course they're telling you to save up, buy a house. How are you going to buy a house for half a mil? We're going to Starbucks, G. It ain't going to happen, right? So all your parents' advice is outdated and it's bullshit. So all the old advice is bullshit. Saving money is bullshit. Inflation is like 10%. Save. You got to get rid of your money. Fuck saving. You got to fucking spend it. So everything they tell you is, is, is wrong and old. So it's all modern wealth creation, 18 different modern wealth creation methods. It's $49 a month. And you can spend that $49 on anything you want. You don't have to join my school. You can go buy lunch if you want. So I'm competing against the entire world, right? You can, you can invest that in anything. And people are still choosing my school. That shows it has a genuine value. At the point of this podcast where I checked this morning, we have 108,000 students. 108,000 students. 108,000 in Hustlers University? Correct. Whoa. 108,000 isn't impressive that I've amassed. It's impressive that I retain. There are 108,000 people in the world who have joined my school for $49 a month. And they say, I am getting more for my money or more value than I'm investing here. I'm either making more money back or I'm learning more than I would ever possibly learn for $49 anywhere else. So I, unlike traditional education, genuinely compete in the world. And I'm the only educational platform in the world that does this. There's no competition at all. And I do it because the people who join my school and listen actually make money. Now, I've been accused of a bunch of shit. Da, da, da. There is an affiliate system. You can make money with affiliates. That is a system that does exist inside. That's one of the 18 ways. You don't have to just affiliate for HU. You can affiliate for Amazon products. We teach how to affiliate for fucking anything. So you can affiliate with, for a bunch of shit. But there's 17 other ways to make money all inside of the school itself. So we are the number one educational platform on the planet. And I will say this now. Anybody who's serious about making money should be inside. 
because $49 is not going to help you in any other way in your life. You, there's no crypto you're going to buy for 50 bucks that's going to blow up. There's nothing else. For $50, you have fucking nothing to lose. I'm not saying it's going to be easy. I'm not saying it's going to be quick, but we'll teach you how to make money if you're sit, ready to sit there and learn. So that's what HU is. So I've got the HU and the Warm, the two biggest things online. So between those, I'm doing okay. When you say um, like they want to get the kids out of the schools, who, who do you think is like, that's like some heavy, like that's some heavy string pulling. Like who do you think is behind that? Like I know people just say it's the government, but to no, the be, government, to, the gov the but government. you know what I mean though? To be that smart to say, all right, we're going to separate kids from their parents so we can take over the minds of the youth. That's like a very smart concept to think of do you know what i mean like how, how does someone come up with that is you, that you like, come up with it because it's natural human nature right like if you have a do you think that's like the government making those decisions it's way above the government like that's what i mean like who do you think is they there are people who've been in charge of the world for quite a long time and to keep it simple and to keep make sure this podcast stays up the people who control the money are going to control the world because if you have money you can influence people yeah right so and the governments what do the governments need money so they're just a, they're a layer in the chain. The governments, I mean. the governments are the illusion of choice. Yeah, it doesn't matter who the fucking mm -hmm. president is. It's bullshit, mm -hmm. right? So the true matrix, the people who truly control it, they want as much influence and power as possible. This is human nature. If you have a company, you're not going to hire employees who disagree with you and don't listen to you. You're going to want them to be as compliant as possible, just like you're going to want your woman to be as compliant as possible. It's, it's who you are as a man, right? So if you're one of the most important, powerful billionaires on the planet, you're going to want as much power over the world as possible. You want people to be compliant. So you're going to look for that outside support structures and attempt to attack them. If you had a girlfriend and she's 100% and she listens to you, except she has this one friend who's always in her ear talking shit, you're going to say, don't be friends with her anymore. So if you're trying to teach the children X, but their parents are trying to teach them Y, you're going to say that we need them to spend less time around their parents. So how do we do that? We need the parents to be more busy and we need them to go somewhere. That's just like some crazy control shit. That, that is, is what crazy, I'm saying. Yeah. But that's what, that's what they've done. Yeah. It's on purpose. Like, it's very, very purposeful. It's all done on purpose. These people I just are think not the fucking average, stupid. The average person doesn't understand that, like, that statement means that, like, there's people above us that are just trying to control us, right? Oh, completely. There's people in charge above us trying to control us all. I mean, if the last three years haven't proved that, I don't know what's going to prove it to you. <laughs> like, there's definitely people who want to control us because all of us, every man on earth, has an innate instinct for power and control. We're not, we're all human. We're not pure creatures. The reason you guys love doing this podcast is because you love being big and getting more followers and getting more influence. What is influence? It's power. It's control. Mm -hmm. It's what you want. It's what I want. It's what everyone wants. If you get to a certain level in life, that's what you want. Now you're going to have power and influence over a whole bunch of people. You may believe, it's not even necessarily evil. You may believe that you're helping them. They don't understand the world. They're the little peasants. They're the ants. I'm the big billionaire. I'm going to teach them things. They don't know they need to learn yet. Their mother is outdated. She's in their ear. We're going to separate them so I can help the kids. They may think they're doing it for a good reason, but what they're really doing is trying to propagate their own personal worldviews on other people, as we all do, as you do, as I do, etc. They just have managed to have a lot more influence and more power to do it, right? Mm -hmm. So you talk about governments. The fuck is a government? Governments are bought and sold. That's, that, that's all bullshit, right? But there's people in charge of the world who want us to listen when they talk. And they're going to do their very, very best to stop anybody or stop any kind of power or support structure, which is going to prevent that. It's done on purpose. This is why they also try and ensure that the people of most nation states are infighting. This is why government and politics, and everything is the biggest lie in the world. You have Democrats and Republicans arguing with each other all fucking day when they are two sides of the same coin. <laughs> and the people in charge of all of it are laughing. Bro, if you had to fight a hundred fucking cats right you probably get through it but it'd be a bit messy the first thing you want to do is turn 100 to, fuck yeah well 100 what i take 100 cats easy yeah snap the necks like fucking rambo <laughs> point is you'd want to turn all the the white cats against the fucking yellow cats first start civil war first let's get them uneasy we don't working together on me now let's 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 man they, well you're democrat you're republican you're black you're white you're brown you're gay you're straight you're a man you're a woman you're this, you're that, you're this, you're that. And then everyone's gonna sit there and fucking argue all day and they're gonna sit at the top laughing. There's more of us than there is of them, but they don't think that. They're, they're very, very smart. It's, divi it's divisive on How purpose. How do they get that smart? It's because it's, it's age old, bro. This shit's been around for so a very long time. So it's just families that have learned along the way. It's not just families, it's, it's just age old. If you look at how- But that's like really smart shit. Look at how England, yeah, that's crazy. Look at how England conquered India. England conquered India with less than 100,000 troops. There was millions of Indians. And the supply line is nine months long. 
How do you do it? You turn up, you turn one team against another team, one family against another family, one tribe against another tribe, arm one side, they start winning. Oh shit, we need to take some power back, arm the other side. Do, 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 do. It's basic foreign policy. And it's internal policy. It's basic. It's how it's always been. And then before you know it, who runs India? The British. <laughs> it's how you do it, right? It's how, it's how America does most of foreign policy today. It's how the world functions. You cannot have people united. You can't have people united. If you have all the people inside your country united, they're not going to stand up for shit. I'm sorry, they're not going to stand for shit. They're going to stand up for shit. Secretly, though, we are a lot aligned, but the media just thinks that we're not. The, no, the media doesn't think. The, the media, media makes convinces. us think. They convince it wants people that you we're to divided, feel like yeah. you're not. So they know. They know. Like Lemon and the media is the machine. The media is the crazy. weapon that they use to it's propagate. Sad. Yeah, it's sad. So the, all of this is very, very purposeful. The people in charge of the world do it on purpose. Of course it's done on purpose. Um, but you're saying like, why did they come up with these ideas or how is it done? Because they wouldn't be no, able to No, I know why. It's just the how is like, they're just geniuses. It's almost yeah, scary. It's like like to come up to sit, to, for people to sit in a room and say, all right, now we're going to target the youth and we're going to take, we're going to implement the system to take away yeah. the youth from their parents yeah. is like some scary smart bro, they're, shit. Bro, bro, they're like, doing scarier shit than that. I know. <laughs> that, that's nothing. They're doing much scarier shit than that. Like, and, and, and it's just the beginning. So, but if this wasn't a public podcast, I'd love to talk about this in far more detail, but it's a public podcast and the war room's good, but well, I think we did good. Why don't we go and, yeah. smoke another cigar out there, maybe crank a beer and fucking, yeah, we'll more I think it was good. Yeah, yeah. we'll talk about it a bit more. You're a fucking legend, bro. We appreciate you. Yeah, what's, what's some, what's some closing statements? Closing statements? Wait, can I ask you one more thing though? Sure, man. Sure. I, man, I'll talk forever. Let's back, go. Let's real fucking... quick, back to the lines. If like you're in the club, if you're in the club and there's lines. a chick. It's not lines. It's no, a number, G. Okay, body count. And there's a chick that has 10. And then there's one that has one. Who are you going for that you know you have a better chance of sleeping with? Uh, I would have a better chance of. But that's the thing. Dude. Kind of the that's the thing. Honestly. Okay. Well, then I'll I'll answer that question. Yeah. Just answer could, that because. Yeah, answer all right. That. I'll answer that question because it's a bit of a trick question. Yeah. I can't be tricked because I'm a professional. Because when the question was originally asked, it was who would you prefer? Yeah. And you said you would prefer the one with more. Okay. Right. So okay. we would still prefer the one with one. Yeah. Okay. Now, because. There's a higher probability of sleeping with the hoe. That's true. It doesn't mean she's pre preferred. It doesn't mean that's the preference. And the true answer is you would try with the girl with one. And if you failed towards the end of the night, you'd yes. end up yes. around the girl with 10. Okay. That's what would happen. Okay. That's so, a great answer. Th 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 that's what would actually Did happen. I really say preferred earlier? You said answer. preferred, yes. Okay. That's my fault. I, I, I fucked that up. Yeah, you'd prefer. But who's doing anal? <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> All right, we're good. I mean, like, no, but this is another thing. I, I don't know, man. Maybe, maybe I'm getting old. This is my closing statement. Maybe I'm getting old. I'm 35, right? I've seen the world change in real time. I remember the world before the internet and I've seen the rise of the internet. And I would say now I'm big on the internet and stuff. And I just think the world, I used to, I understand when I was young and I used to like something and old people would say, turn that off, it's degenerate. I'd be like, it's just a video game or it's yeah, just a yeah. song. I'm becoming that guy. Yeah. I'm becoming that guy now where I hear things or I see shit. The world's just so degenerate now. Oh, 100%. I see like these girls like twerking and on a too. boat or dudes just do popping pills. I just, I don't know. It's just all so degenerate. And when, now that degeneracy angers me, it's made me almost, it's, it's changed me to a degree. Cause even you're just talking about banging chicks, whatever, whatever. I really have no interest in just tearing through chicks. I just think it's degenerate. I just think- I think guys are degenerate too. Uh, yeah, no, of course men are and women are. I just think it's a degenerate attitude. Like I could sleep with thousands of women. I just think it's, maybe I'm just bored of it. I don't know, but I'm just kind of like, I'd rather have one or two or five. Give me five girls and I'll settle down. Five wives, that's enough. <laughs> I'm not gonna be Mr. One, one Gina. I'm not, you know, I'm, not, I'm not gonna be Mr. One ho is too close to no ho. So we're not gonna go down that road. With five but, but five is enough. Give me a buffer space to replace one if she gets out of line, whatever. Give me five chicks, I'll settle down right now. But to, to actually be running out there and just really tearing through it, I just think maybe I'm just bored of the game. Maybe, maybe it got too easy. But I, I don't know. Even sex in and of itself, I just think, is it that That's good? Fine. You don't think one woman can please you, like fully? I don't think one woman is capable of com of completing a man's life. Absolutely no. I think you need a wife. Yeah. Sexually, sexually. But I yeah, think yeah. I think you need a wife and you need hoes. Yeah. You need both. I don't think it's there's times and a place. I agree because I mean there are times where you're like I mean <laughs> there are times where you well, do want. I, I just love it. it, bro. You're so funny, bro. It's true. I think uh, I think with five wives, things around the house, things in general, will just be more efficient. You know the best thing about having multiple women? I'll tell you from my, my webcam days. Do I, they interact I, with each other or do you separate them? Oh, no, they're them? super interacted. Because I only told like 20% Do they get jealous, story. though? 
Yeah, but they got jealous, but it's hard to get jealous. This is about the social paradigm. It's hard. They, of course they got jealous and I would reassure them and tell them everything's okay, but they would never disrespect me openly because no one else did. You don't want to be the only disrespectful bitch. Now you get kicked out. <laughs> yeah, it's, not, it's, not, it's not the societal norm. Is there a, this is why in America, everyone's fat because it's normal. You go to Russia or Ukraine, there's very few fat people because you don't want to be seen fat because no one's fat. So everyone's going to be like, oh, what the fuck are you obese for? Do you understand what I'm saying? Sure. It's a societal norm. If every chick is coming up to me and treating me like God, you don't want to be the only chick with an attitude because you feel embarrassed. You ever had plus, that? plus, uh, yeah, of course I had that. Plus you get kicked out. Yeah. What I used to do. I get your, I get your strategy now. Girls get kicked out. And then when they got kicked out, they'd fail because they're naturally lazy. So then when a girl, when a girl got kicked out, we'd have a, we'd have a party. Every time, a girl, every time I fired a bitch, we'd have a party. So we'd have a party. <laughs> And, and, and not make fun of her, but just say like, one less hoe, last one standing, gets the sun. We used to make a joke and all this shit. So we kick the girl out, we'd have a party, and, and, and girls would instantly, not like turn on her, but girls are tribal, right? She's no longer part of the tribe. She's, she's stupid. And we'd all kind of think, and the part of the party is we'd, we'd monitor her, monitor her on camera. So every day after she left, we'd check on how, how well she was doing. How? You can see them online, how many hours they do, their ranking on the website, how much money oh, they're making, all that kind of oh. stuff. Oh, and they go from way up here, making millions, to just slowly declining. Because they're lazy. They're lazy. They're lazy. They fall off and end up down to nothing and then beg for their job back. Don't. So, that, so, so now girls are like, if I leave, he's going to have a party. He's going to make fun of me and I ain't going to make any money. And I'm going to be another one of the ones they mock. And da, da, da. So now girls don't want to lose their job, right? So girls didn't really disrespect me. But when you're talking about um, of them being jealous, yeah. But I was about to say, one of the best things about living with multiple women, this is actually the best thing about it. The best thing about living with multiple women is that all the girl shit, they do together. So your girl, if she, right now if you have a girlfriend, she has a group of friends. All of those friends are your enemy. Every single thing they say to her is bad about you. That's he doesn't let you bad. go out. Hey, why is he asking where you are? Why is he calling you? It's only a boat party. Let's go here. That's They're true. all negative. You don't want your woman talking to them. That's true. Now, if you're fucking <laughs> the same four girls, it's true as if fuck. you're fucking the same four girls, then her friendship circle are all behaving and all your positive towards you now. So you don't have that negative influence, which means you get to send her away with her friends all the time. If you have a girlfriend, you don't want to send her away with her friends because they're up to bad shit. I love sending my girls away. Oh, you want your nails done? Go. Boom. Oh, you want to go see that shit movie? Go. Go to, go to the security. <laughs> oh, oh, you want to go? Go. Leave me the fuck alone. Go. You want to go Ikea? We need towels? Cool. Go to Ikea. I didn't have to do none of the dumb shit men have to do. I see men doing all this dumb shit with their chick because they don't want her to do it with their friends. Man. I haven't been Ikea in a long time. Ikea is the most depressing place on the planet. What if you go Ikea to Ikea? Ikea sucks. Wait, 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 and you're wrong. What what if, you, if you go to Ikea with five wives. Even worse. How? I would, I'll tell you, because cool, I can send them five bitches by themselves. I went to Ikea about three years ago, and I genuinely think it was one of the most depressing experiences of my yeah, life. Yeah, that place fucking I sucks. saw full grown men. It's so busy and shit, too. Oh, I saw, and it's a maze. I saw full grown men on a Sunday morning walking around. How about the Ikea hot dogs, though? They're all right. They're pretty good. <laughs> but the sadness, the sadness in the eyes of the full grown man on a Sunday morning walking around and his wife is like picking up a towel. You want this towel or this towel? And you can see he doesn't give a solitary fuck. It's his only day off. It's his only day off. It's He's sad. been working for six days. And she's like, we need to go Ikea, Steve. And he's like, oh, can't we not go? We need towels, Steve. He's like, oh, maybe I might get laid next month if I go Ikea. And he's standing there and she's like, which towel, Steve? And he's like, like carrying the baby. Oh, I, I don't know. Which one do you like, babe? I'm like, oh, this whole place is just depressing me. I can't get out. It's a maze and everyone's fucking sexless and depressed. It's fucking horrible. Fuck, man. Damn. But if I send the Chicks, they can fuck around all day in Ikea. Don't give a fuck. And you know what? Oh, I can dead. trust them because they're all <laughs> vying for position with me. If one of them even looked at a dude, the other three would go, we were in Ikea and this guy walked past and she, she looked at this guy. They're all rat. They're all rat to me. I'm the big boss. Really? Oh, no, 100%. Well, no. they're friends, all right, but they're all fucking reporting to me. And on the sly, I'm like, look, you're the only one I trust. If anyone says anything, tell me. It's all four. Boom, boom, boom. They're all coming to me going, yeah, I, I think she loves you, but you know, I don't know, we were in Ikea and she didn't talk about you the whole time. They're, they're all just fucking ratting, ratting, ratting. So I could trust all of them because they're all fucking spying on each other. It was great. I didn't have to do no shit. If you're with one bitch, she's like, I want to go see this movie. You're like, fucking sh no. And they got to, like, it's, it's long. You need multiple women so they can fuck off and do women shit. It's important. You don't ever do like, it's a, important. Wait, you, don't, you, you don't ever go on a date with like oh all five? Oh my God. Man. You've never been oh like, yo, I'm going to treat all five of you tonight and go somewhere So nice? I used to go, I used to go to the club with all of them. Actually, this is one of the big things about Romania. When I first moved to Romania, me and my brother went to the club and we walked in there 
And we saw like dudes, like two gypsy dudes or two old dudes, and they'd have like fucking dirty women on their table, right? So you go to a club in Romania, it's like 20 dudes, 100 girls, but the girls aren't accessible. You can't go there as a tourist and pick them up because they all belong to people, right? So when we and Tristan first went there by ourselves. What happens if you do? You're going to get in big trouble. Fast. Yeah, like death? Death? Really? death? Yeah. Like, it's, no, it's not death. It's just like, they're going to tell you. To be I'll, it wouldn't be that fast. Like, they tell they'll you to warn fuck, you first. They'll tell you to fuck off. Yeah. yeah. And if you really push it, then you, you, you're you dead. Know, yeah, you get in trouble. But, um, wow. but me and Tristan went there. We understood the vibe. Did it. So when we went to the club, because we saw, well, we ain't getting shit here. We're by ourselves. We left after 20 minutes. We went to the club ourselves next week, but we had the can business. So we went ourselves with 20 girls. So to the Romanian, like the big boys, the bosses, they were like, whoa, these are Westerners. Not many Western dudes have 20 bitches on tap to just pull out hotties and walked in there. In so, Romania? In Romania, yeah. We had all these chicks there. We had chicks everywhere, all around the world, whatever. We had different studios. But, um, yes, yeah, so you're saying, did I ever take my girls on dates? Girls are fantastic for status. There's times where if you want status, you need women. Women are status. Women are the, inter true, are the true currency of ballers. Fuck money. It's women. If I go to... Uh, the Bugatti dinner. Everyone there's rich. Everyone's got Bugatti. Everyone's got Rolex. Everyone's got a nice house. Everyone's got a boat. Who cares? But who has the bitches? But who's sitting there with two wives? Yeah, Me. You're sitting there with a hooker who doesn't really like you. You can see it in her eyes. You're sitting with a wife who's old and ugly. You're sitting with a bitch you don't fuck. I'm sitting there with two wives who adore me and are both gorgeous. Who's the rich guy? I could be the poorest man in the room, but I'm the guy they want to talk to. So women are the true currency of international ballers. So you need to be able to pull hotties out your ass just for fucking status. So if you're saying, do I take girls out? Not to give them fun or nothing. There'd be scenarios in which, yeah, I need to bring the baddies. <laughs> it was pure status thing. Yeah, I'll just roll up fucking 10 baddies. Boom. That's true, Walk though. in. Boom. That, that, that's it. Give right? a hot girl you, do, you do get respect, Wait, though. I mean, you, you get respect, you yeah. This all over you. But yeah. no, I'm going to say real. something. When you have a hot girl with you and you yeah. introduce her to somebody and you know she's hot, it's like a, yeah, she's with me. It's, it's a status. Thing. It's yeah. a status. So having hot women is a status. You Yeah. Why are you laughing? <laughs> I was like, because he was, that, I don't I know. Have felt that. I have felt that. He was just being, he's just. No, I was just asking. No, have you ever, I have have you ever dealt before. with that? Or? Yeah, I have. Oh, okay. My dad Wait, so, and his friends are fucking <laughs> 75. So, so, Andrew, you've never had a girl, like, kind of, like, intimidate you in a way where you're like, fuck, I'm kind of nervous around this chick. No, I'll tell you why. Yeah, have you ever had that? No, because I live in a very, very, let me be very correct in my language. I live in a world which is. I like to think I'm very true to the base instincts of humanity. Episode. Should I shut up? Should no, I no, it's good. No, no, no. I love it. Cool. This is our longest episode, I think, bro, probably. Bro, I got 10 more hours. Right. I like to think, I like to think, <laughs> I, I like to think I live very true to the base instincts of reality. And the base instinct of reality always has been to a degree violence. I'm not a violent person. I'm a very peaceful person. But as long as I'm not threatened with violence, it's very difficult for me to give a shit about anything else. And that's because I've been threatened with violence so many times and I've been in so many scenarios. Outside of professional fighting, I've been in so many scenarios where I really thought I might die. As long as that's not happening, I don't really give a shit. So if I'm sitting there with a bitch and she's hot, intimidated, what? She, she, can't, she ain't got hands. She can't slip a jab. <laughs> she can't fight. Which, like, that's, one of my, that's one of my brother, shout out to my brother, Tristan. That's one of his best sayings. When he gets caught cheating, or his girls go bust, go crazy, or they catch him do something. Da, da, da. His number, first thing, she ain't got hands. So, like, what, what are they gonna do? Blow you up on WhatsApp? And you're gonna or block you? Oh, don't block me! You, the fuck, they can't do nothing. So intimidated? Why? How can I be intimidated by a chick? Cause she's hot. I, I don't understand. Like, I, I'm intimidated by certain scenarios where I, there might be a, a consequence or a repercussion. If I go on a date and she doesn't like me, cool. Give a fuck. Like, are, are you still fighting or no? So you have scars on your knuckles. Yeah. Go stay ready, my friend. Stay ready. I saw you want to fight. You want to fight Jake Paul? So, yeah, I made the video saying I was going to fight Jake Paul when he first called out Conor McGregor. Do you remember when he did that first call out video? Oh, the first one was savage. It was savage. I got to be honest. It seems beneath you, though. If you're as rich as you are, you got the status. Why would you want to go fight Jake Paul? Yeah. So I made that video when he... He first called out Conor McGregor because I thought he was being disrespectful. How is that beneath him? Jake Paul's pretty fucking Jake Paul's big. big. Jake Paul's yeah. pretty big. But, but I think that Conor McGregor, at, at the time, I thought that, that Jake Paul was just disrespecting fighters as a whole because fighting is a really hard life. Well, back then, it was like, whoa. Yeah. Okay. But now, okay. I, now it seems that Jake Paul's taking his boxing careers very yeah. seriously. Yeah. Got it, got it, he's got taking it very, very seriously. So I'm no longer angry at the guy because he's now a boxer, effectively. And he's using attention. He's using... Uh, pro, pro, Provoc uh, provocative marketing to make himself as much money as possible. I, of all people on the planet, cannot sit here and, and, sh and shit on that oh fucking game. Oh my God, yo. So I get what he's doing, right? Could you imagine a press conference 
him <laughs> and another fighter talking shit at a fucking press conference. I would love to see you. Would you, 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 you do that? I'll do what? Would you do some sort do of large scale boxing fight or how about I, MMA? I, I fought a year ago in MMA. I sparked him. I'm open to all things. Would I'm you rather box? Because kickboxing, no yeah, one's probably. No one really cares. You know, no one's watching. I'll, I'll fight MMA or boxing. Doesn't matter to me. I'm. I'm very. Let's get Andrew Tate in the UFC. Yeah, I'm Ew. open to it, but it's a lifestyle that I lived for a very long time. Understand that from the age of 17 to the age of 27, for 10 years of my life, all I did was train. That's why now I can still jump on the pads and smash out 12 rounds easy. Are you How often do you train a week? I, I still train nearly every day, but to live that lifestyle, it's, it's, a, it's a big sacrifice. You got to dial in. Yeah. It's got to dial in. And so for me to do it, I'm not saying I wouldn't do it. It would have to be very worth it. The problem is for it to be worth it, people will say, oh, how much money? And I have more money than anyone would possibly What believe. weight class would you fight at? 92, 93 kilo, which is like just, just light heavyweight. Do you, have a, right. do you have a guy that if you had to fight at the UFC, you'd fight? Or some fighter that comes Wait, to how many page? pounds is that? Sorry, I don't know. <sighs> I don't know pounds. 195, 200 pounds. Uh, light heavyweight. Um, yeah. Around 200, right? Yeah, 205 around is light heavyweight. Two, pounds, five. Uh, kilos, yeah. that means he's like. Two, yeah, 200. So anyway, there are possibilities for things in the mix, perhaps. If I can find it, it'd be worth it. But it's, it's just, I'm now at States now with they go, well, it's worth it. You get 10 million. 10 million, what, a week's wage? Bullshit. Six months training for that. I don't need a week's wage for six months training. And then they'll It'd go, you get credit. for the extra exposure. And then probably. they'll go, you get exposure. That's what they'll say. But I've already, I'm already the most what exposed about the man on the planet. I've conquered the world. So, mm. And then you talk about accomplishment. I've had 87 professional fights. I've been, I've been in the ring a bunch of times. Four times world champion. You know, 71 wins. I've, I've, I've done it. I'm very competent and happy and comfortable with who I am as a man. I know that 99.9% .9 of the men on the planet are a one-punch issue, and I'm fine. So no. it's kind of yeah. like, do I really want to do it? There are people who I would fight. I'm not going to say their names on this podcast, but there are, and there are scenarios, and there are things in the Famous works people? where I might Give fight. Famous people? Give us one. Give us one. No, man. No, we're working on it. I'm working on some things for everyone to see. I know, I know everyone wants to see me fuck someone up. That's what they want to see. They want to see me smash someone up, which yeah. is fine. Who, who, what so. is the percentage of the people that actually know how to fight in the world? I, I heard well, well this, is the, this is another thing, because I actually don't believe in fighting Outside of the cage or the ring, I don't believe that fighting is, is a real thing. I don't believe fighting is real. Violence and fighting are different things. So, no, so is that you saying like no one really knows how to fight outside of... No, I'm saying that it doesn't matter. Oh, okay. Fighting and violence are a real thing. So I, I, I made that comment that most men are a one-punch issue. That's true. Actually, recently, a video which got taken down off my YouTube, but I'll give it to you guys. Maybe you can sneak it in. Um, me and my brother were in the nightclub, and some guys, six guys, were sh sitting on our Chiron taking pictures. And someone told us, sitting on the, the hood of the car, and we left the club, we rolled up, it's all on CCTV, and me and my brother attacked the six of them and put them all asleep. This is in Romania. So, like, we're still about it. Like, it, it, well, it, it's it, like a movie. Bro, but you know what? You know what's cool? Wait, where was this? This, this is in Romania. Oh, okay. Me and, me and Tristan is kind of like, man, because we grew up together, we lived together, whatever, whatever. And we know each other so well, we can talk without talking. So as the taxi pulled up, we were literally praying they're still fucking around near our car, right? Because they were sitting on the front of the car, sitting on it. And as the taxi pulled up, we're both in the back seat, and we both just turned to each other and went, we got out and started fucking smashing them up. No words, no get off the car. It's all on CCTV. You'll see. I'll give you the video. Just start awesome. fucking knocking them all asleep. So, I want to see that shit. Yeah, but, um, but, but this is the point. That, 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 to a degree, could be fighting, but I don't think fighting is a real thing outside the ring because violence is a different thing. I know truly violent people, and I've been in truly violent scenarios, and if someone is truly violent, they don't need to know how to fight. And I'm saying if someone who is violent wants you, you're going to die. Violence is 10 men with machetes. Violence is spray the matic. Violence is run them over with a car. Vi violence isn't, hey, bro, that, 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 uh, that's the olden days. Let's go outside, have a fucking, that's all gone now. If you're, if you're caught in altercations on the street, no matter how big of a tough guy you are, the best thing you can do is leave. There are too many people who are ready to fucking go to jail nothing or to die with yeah. nothing to fucking lose. I, I have a full security team with me everywhere I go. How many roll with? I'm strapped. I have like four or five guys usually. I'm strapped everywhere I go where, where possible. Like I, don't, I really don't like the idea of having to hit people unless I really have to hit people. Because you're talking about fighting and violence. How many people can't fight? You can get a guy who can't fight in an SUV who sees you on the sidewalk. <laughs> <laughs> and, and just thinks, up. fuck yeah. this guy. Bro, it, it, it's a dangerous world. And, and even now, especially like in London, I know boys who've had, who've been pack stabbed. When four dudes roll up with blades and jump you, man, it's just fucking, you're dying, man. You're dying. You're, it only takes one fucking wound. Oh, I know Krav Maga. You don't know shit. You ain't Steven Seagal. You are dying. It doesn't matter. You know, to kickbox, box. Amir Khan got robbed for his watch. Fucking ex world champion. They fucking what? ran up on him, took his watch off him two weeks ago. What they do? They pull a fucking sword. Four of them. Give me it. <laughs> what the fuck are you going to do? That'd be the worst feeling. Huh? That'd be the worst feeling. 
What? Getting your watch robbed. Yeah, oh, it happens. Bro. That shit happens a lot. So Probably London's my, so, crazy. No, it happens in Miami. Whoa. It happens in Miami a lot. I don't know really? People. London's nuts now, man. And, and in London's London, a shithole now or what? Bro, shithole. Google, anyone here sitting here, Google London stabbing and click on the news tab. I saw stab, that stab, every day. Stab, 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 every day. And, they, and they, they, they stab first. They don't come up and say, give me the watch. They come up and stab you. And you're like, what the fuck? You start bleeding out. And then, then they take off your corpse. They don't give a fuck, bro. It is crazy in London. London, you need, I need a full, I have a full security. I do not call, walk the streets in London. I do not wear a watch. I have a full security team, everything. It's, London's getting bad, bad. And, and it's not just, the, even the nice areas. You can go to the Knightsbridge, Mayfair. They'll get your ass just the same. There's people in London who just don't give a fuck anymore. And this is, yeah, it's getting crazy. And then, and the Americans say, well, this is why we need guns to defend ourselves. Well, not really, because then they'd have guns. So now what? Like, it's a mentality thing. The mentality of people is dangerous. It's a hard, it's a hard heart that kills. You, you have to be really about it. This is what most people don't understand. People who play gangster and play tough guy don't understand that you don't really want to play that game because you're, you're going to play a game with people who aren't playing. Yeah. A true hard heart is different. There are people, if they want someone dead, he's going to fucking die. They don't care. Daylight, broad daylight, his wife, his kid, they don't give a shit and they'll do the time. They're, they're, these people exist. They're all over the fucking news. You really want to walk around playing gangster with people like that out there in the world? You want to learn to box and say, well, I can defend myself now? You can't defend yourself for fuck. I defend myself with large walls, a bunch of weapons, and being hard to access. That's how you defend yourself. You do not defend yourself thinking, I can kickbox, let me run around the streets. And, and there are people who still do it, but I think the world's on a decline. I think the Western world's getting worse. I don't think it's getting any better. I think that all the problems we're seeing now are going to be 10x, 20x, 30x as people get fucking hungry across the next 10, 20 years. And I think if you don't have a plan to defend yourself or at least move to a place where you don't need to defend yourself in real time, people are going to start getting fucked up back. What do you think is about to happen? Just complete anarchy? I don't think it's going to be complete anarchy, but there's going to be a, a certain, lot of crime. There's going to be a massive polarization. The polarization already exists, right? In Western nations, there's already a polarization because there's no longer any morality which is built into the populace. I live in a poor country. I live in Romania, which is technically poor. It's one of the poorest countries in Europe. It's very, very poor. The average wage is like 400 bucks a month. The police drive Dacia Logans. The police drive cars that can't even go above 70 miles an hour. I've never seen a police chase. When the police stop me, I say, why don't people run? We can just outrun you. He goes, oh, well, you know, why, why run when you can just get ticket? Uh. It's very much people, the, the, the police force isn't heavily armed, like none of this shit, but it's safe. In general, unless you piss off a big guy. The crime is very organized. There's no random crime. It's very organized crime. Organized crime keeps society functioning. Organized crime is very, very functioning, functional. I would rather live in a country with organized crime than unorganized crime. Unorganized crime like London. No, but unorganized crime like London is wrong place, wrong time, get stabbed, take your watch. Organized crime is uh, you have to go and make an enemy. You have to piss someone off. And you usually get a warning. So unless you're a fucking jackass, you'll be fine. It's only if you want to go into industries which are competing with them or if you want to like do something they don't like. I, I know that a lot of the gangsters in certain towns in Romania keep the drugs out. The towns are drugs free. People try to sell drugs. They're the ones who died. So there's no drugs on the streets because they don't like drugs because their children go to school. So you have drug free cities. American police can't get a city drug free, but the mafia will. They'll get a city drug free because they catch anyone fucking selling that shit. They're fucking disappearing. So organized crime can actually be pretty good for a society because as long as you don't piss these people off, now, Americans are the worst on the planet for this. Americans have basically no social awareness and they're jackasses with big mouths. So an American might go to a place like Romania and get drunk and be like, hey, bro, man, bro, man, I do what I want, bro. They're gonna get fucked up, right? But if you're, if you're a person with a brain and you're like, you know what, this is not my territory. Sorry, really sorry. You're never gonna have any trouble. So organized crime is a good thing. So Romania is a very, very poor country, a lot of organized crime, but in general, it's extremely safe. Girls walk alone at night all in the middle of parks, three in the morning, through a park, you'll see some hot, beautiful chick just walking through the park. And, and I said to people like, isn't she scared? Like, what if someone were to attack her or whatever? And they say, no, she's a Romanian girl. Like a Romanian man would not hurt a Romanian girl. There's like a unity, there's a morality. Romania is the most Christian country in the world. Sense of, it's like yeah. there, there's a common sense of morality, right? So they would never just hurt someone random because they see themselves in them. America, yeah, doesn't, America doesn't that. have that. No, nope. yeah. America has none of that. But America's more diverse too, right? It's more diverse, which is why when you look into it, and hey, bro, I'm I'm brown. I'm half I'm half black, half white. My father is African American. So we talk about diversity. I'm not saying it from a racist standpoint. I'm saying the reason it's propagated by the Matrix is because it divides society, which is what they want, as we well, discussed earlier. Which we can go into another point, but I don't want to get the podcast taken. No, but but I'm just saying that 
when you live in a homogenous society like Romania, where 99.9% .9 people are Romanian, they see themselves in other people. So when the country goes broke, because it's already broke, now the country's poor, crime doesn't escalate. America's a different story. As soon as America starts running out of money and people start getting broke in America, it's, it's a free for all. As soon as people start, can't, I can't eat. Look at the looting. I've never seen looting in Romania. No one's ever looted a store. None of this shit. In the riots, Romania had huge political protests because one of their uh, presidents got caught stealing billions. Massive protests. You can Google it up like you've never seen. Bigger than BLM. Huge. Not a single store looted. Not one. Why? Because that's some family store. Uh, there's morality left. That looting shit was fucking Bro, close. there's no morality. So you're saying what's going to happen? I'm saying in the Western world, we're not without morality. The only thing that keeps people in line is fear of the law. The second that's gone, <sighs> you better get on a jet, G. It's going to be a fucking Fact. shit I think show. Some, I think some crazy shit's about to go down in our lifetime. Show, if man. shit does go down, can we bunk up with you? or? I, I have got food for 10 years in my house. You got guards, too. <laughs> I've got food for 10 years and bullets for a long firefight. So. And four wives. Uh, more than that, G. Come on, I haven't settled down yet. But um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think I think yeah, and, and it's it's interesting. Like people, we can talk about a whole bunch of shit. But when you're talking about wealth and money and stuff, the rich truly understand this. The wealth, the the wealthy of the world are starting to understand this. Americans are actually a very unique type of people because I am American as well. So when I say these things, I'm not hating on Americans. I'm American, right? But Americans are unique because like when Americans make a bunch of money, it doesn't really cross their mind to leave America. They, they, the, the PSYOP, the most, the most free country, we're the freest. To, free to do what, G? What are you more free to do? Like, how about this? I'll go drive 200 miles an hour in my Lambo in Romania, and you drive 200 miles per hour in your Lambo in America, and let's see who gets in more trouble. What are you free? You can't even drive fast. Free. Well, probably freer than China or something. Uh, freer than China? Who's not freer than China? Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, like, but I'm saying that there's most places, you can go to Portugal and do whatever the fuck you want. But you said it yourself. Like, so, but, but I'm saying the PSYOP is so large on the American populace that a lot of the money still stays inside of America. But in other countries, people are more, more open and agile. But I think as the internet comes, as people start to realize, wait, I'm an American, I'm earning X amount of money, I I'm, I'm, want to move to Miami and, and da, da, da. or I can move to Croatia. I think there's a lot of good people in America though too, there but, is. but there's a lot of idiots too. Yeah, completely. I'm not hating on Americans. I'm saying that when the wealth of America starts realizing that their money will get them further, they will be safer and have a better quality of life outside of the USA. That's the problem for the USA. I'm not hating on the people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm saying that the American mindset is still America, 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 everywhere else is dangerous and poor. Yeah. But look, Americans haven't traveled much per percent of the population. Da, da, da. But once they realize there's other options, a lot of Americans will be like, wait, instead of 10 grand a month in Miami, I could spend a grand a month in Croatia. Hotter women, zero crime, <laughs> better like the weather's hotter just chicks as good. in Croatia. Yeah, Croatia's badass, man. I mean, hotter than Miami. Miami has a lot of hot girls, but okay, let me change it from hotter. Let me change it to better quality. Okay. Here they go to church. They're innocent. You can show them the world. You here ain't, show, they have you ain't like, showing a bitch here in they Miami have like nothing. One body. Yeah, so well. that's for us three. Fifties like. <laughs> Stay Miami, G. Yeah. But that, that's likes, my point. So you're talking totally. about what's gonna happen. I, I think that as 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 my, as wealth starts to flee the West, there's gonna be serious issues. That's why this is gonna happen. That's scary shit. Scary shit, bro. But I might be wrong. Who knows? I'm some no, crazy I think, idiot. I, I agree. Oh, I yeah. think some. I just feel some crazy shits coming. Like yeah. people are just getting more and more and divided. Polarized. The government's Market's getting fucked, crazier and crazier. Fucked, everything's fucked. But they polarize us on purpose. Like I, I, I'm not gonna. I think it's gonna come to a complete crash, and it's gonna take a total reset for humanity to ever get back to. True, but How the problem is so? the total. The total reset. I have no idea. The total. The I think total, in our lifetime. But this is the problem. So whoever is powerful enough to construct a total reset will construct it in a way that we have even less freedom than we've ever had. True. Oh. That's, what the, that's what the reset's for. Yeah. They're trying to destroy it all for the reset so they can come along and say, the only oh way we can God. keep you safe, of the course. only way you are safe is if you obey. Let me give you guys some examples. Some very Bro, simple that's examples. No, yeah, 100%. Let me give you some examples, right? Because once the, the only thing that's preventing a huge reset right now is a human element. The human element is the one thing that they're combating against. So we were talking earlier about- What do you mean by the human element? Right, we're talking about kids going to school and the mother involved and, and the human ideas, the human element. So let's give an example. The last three years, there was a pandemic, blah, blah, blah. They made all these crazy rules. The rules only exist if the police enforce them. And during the pandemic, I traveled the entire world. I never stayed still for a second. I managed to get in and out of every country I wanted to. I did whatever the fuck I wanted. So Sweden never locked down. They don't want to talk about that. They don't talk about the fact that in Stockholm, in nightclubs, it was full of chicks and it was completely fucking normal without masks the, whole time? the entire fucking time. So I'm in <laughs> Stockholm for three months, right? So you can go to Stockholm, go from country to country, whatever, whatever. The country where the police forces are more professional, more inside of the matrix, had stricter COVID rules than the countries where the police are 
more corrupt and more lazy because you can't enforce it. So if I was in Serbia and didn't wear a mask and a police officer comes and said mask, I said, bro, this is stupid. I'm not wearing a mask. Okay. He doesn't, he doesn't get paid enough. He doesn't care. American cop, you better put it on, bro. Put on the mask. Like, so the, the, the police force, the more matrix minded they are, the more strict the society is going to be. And I'm saying the human element because there are certain laws that they'd love to make, but they can't make because they're too far for the police, even in completely controlled con countries, Western countries, to enforce. If they were to say to the American police, kill everyone with the long hair, they w the police wouldn't do it, right? But the human element is being removed. This is what I'm trying to say. All this shit with electric cars and AI and all this stuff, wait until the police are robots. Wait till they bring on the new COVID shit and there's no human element in the enforcement. Wait till it's fucking pure robotic. When they program the robots, if he ain't got a mask on, take him out. I think there's gonna be a new they won't give a fuck. There's not gonna be, that's a grandma without a mask. It's not gonna be, oh, that's my brother without a mask. It's not gonna be, you know what, this pandemic's gone on too long. This guy doesn't have a mask on. It's not gonna be, ah, oh, he's asthmatic. Da -da. There are certain things you could, even as stupid as the police were during this thing, because the police proved themselves to be fucking retards. As stupid as they were, you could still reason with them. Maybe not in America, but in many places in the world, you could say, gee, I'm not wearing a fucking mask. It's a wedding. I want to take a wedding photo. And they'd be like, okay. Like in many places in the world, COVID wasn't really that real because the police didn't really enforce it because they knew it was stupid. Once it goes robotic, then you're, that's the great reset. And here, do you know how they're going to do it? They're going to do it under the guise of safety. They're going to come along and say, all these accidental shootings by human cops, accidentally killing people. We can't trust police officers as people because we're all flawed. A machine never makes a mistake. You're going to be safe with the machine cops. Don't worry. The machine cops come along. And when the machine cops have replaced us all, then the enslavement But we're begins. a long ways away from that. We're no? Okay, then let's take electric cars. Electric cars is the same deal. Electric cars is the same thing. They want us all to have electric cars because they can turn your car off. That's all the reason they want you to have one. They can turn it off. They can't turn off your combustion engine, but they can turn off your fucking electric car. So they're forcing us all to have them. What about one, for the environment, though? Here we go. Now let's talk about that. Let's talk about that bullshit. They want electric cars so they can stop you moving. So that's the whole point of it. You think they give a solitary fuck about the environment? You said environment. The amount of lithium they're digging up to make these batteries is doing more damage to the environment than a fucking petrol engine could ever do. You're telling me about the environment and these people are so scared about climate change, but then the <laughs> second they get money- I think they're just doing it because it makes money though. Because people will buy something to feel well, yeah, environmentally I mean, friendly. For the, to clear what the I'm air. saying like, is- I don't think Elon Musk sitting there thinking, oh, I want to turn people's cars off. He's thinking people are going to buy electric correct. cars to save the environment correct. and I'm going to make fucking correct. money. But the people who are in charge of the world are going to propagate. Yeah, they're they'll, gonna pro they'll get behind They're going to propagate it and purport it under the guise of control because it's all they're interested well, in is, is more control. Is he behind it then too? It's not, no, I think Elon's, I actually believe Elon's a relatively Have good guy. He's making a good product. The point I'm trying to make is this. The way they're going to make us, because if Elon was a good guy making a good product, fine. But why are they going to force us to have electric cars? Because it's coming. Already in Europe, you can't sell diesel cars after 2026. Really? Yeah, already ah, they're stopping. Look it up. Fuck? You can only buy electric cars within 10 years. No, no, they, they don't care. Then, Not yet. That's crazy. Yeah, but then every, every manufacturer is just going to uh, start to make electric cars. Correct. So all the so not about Elon, because all the manufacturers make electric cars, right? America, the reason America is delayed in this, because America, a lot of the lobbying to the government is done by oil companies. That's also why America doesn't have rail. Have you ever wondered why America, as big as it is, doesn't have bullet trains? Doesn't like, have what? Like, like bullet trains, like China or Japan. They have bullet trains. They have 300 mile per hour trains that are never late for an even a single second. America would be perfect for that, but they don't have it because big oil comes along, lobbies the government, makes sure all the rail projects are shut down, so you have to drive your ass on the freeway on these huge freeways, which is good for, for, for the oil companies, for the gasoline. So that's a side note. So that's why it's delayed in America because the big oil is involved. But if you look at Europe, most European countries are already starting to say you have to have an electric car. You can only buy, you can still drive your petrol car, but you have to buy an electric car or a hybrid by 2026. Lamborghini's just gone hybrid. Aston Martin's new car is a hybrid. Even the supercar companies are going hybrid because they know they're gonna have to, right? And what they're about doing Bruce? this, they're doing this, they're right. doing this under the guise of climate change. What did I say earlier about the Trojan horse? We care, about the, how, we care about the planet, climate change, climate change, climate change, climate change. The Trojan horse inside of that is, we're gonna control you. We're gonna stop you eating as much meat. We're gonna stop you flying around on planes. You're gonna to have to have an electric car that we can control and we know exactly where it goes and we can turn it off. We're gonna stop you doing X, Y, Z for the environment. But the people who are in charge of the world who purport this shit, are they flying on economy planes or are they flying on jets? Jets. They're flying on jets. When they get rich and they're so scared about sea levels, they buy a nice big mansion on the water. You ever notice that? Do they give, oh, I thought the sea was coming, but you want a fucking mansion on the beach. You're not very scared of it now, are you? And they'll also have armed guards and say that people can't have can't guns. Can't have guns. So this is what I'm saying. All of these things that the Matrix purports, <clears throat> it's all fucking bullshit because the people who are actually fucking involved in purporting it are not concerned by it on any level. And they're gonna come along to you and say, for the environment, don't eat meat, 
Drive your electric car on Tuesdays. The only day it's going to turn on. Fuck you. You're a peasant. You're a slave. You're a peon. That's what you are, and that's what you'll be. If you try and go to the protest about being a slave, we will shut your electric car off. Fuck you. Fuck yeah. Slavery's coming. And if you resist too much, the kill bots are going to turn up to your house, fucking drag you to Gulag Center number seven. That's the future of humanity. We're living in one of the last free times. Sounds I fucking lit. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's coming. Right. It's coming. Mind fucking you. Yeah. Well, should we wrap? Andrew Tate, you're the fucking man, bro. Yeah, you're the man. Thanks. Thanks this for is great. Yeah, this was by episode. far, how long was this, boys? Like two and a half hours. Two and a half hours.